If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys click the subscribe button. There's more gonna be more fire content on the way. You want me to deafen up? I'll deafen up. Y'all yeah. good? Where is Corbin Johnson? The 18 year old's parents say they dropped him off last week at a job interview and they never saw him again. Corbin's parents what? say they have no idea where their son is after his friends called looking for him too. My boy shot my house up. I was right there on the bed, me and my little brother Quan Quan. I'm from the north side of Jazzville. And the north side has a reputation for being one of the more violent sides, right? Yeah, that's the most violent side of Jazzville. Ball Creek, off of the long strip. We got it. Gunfire erupts in a local neighborhood, leaving one person dead. He was shot and killed in the parking lot of a northwest Jacksonville apartment complex. Her family was woken up about 1.30 in the morning Saturday when a brick came crashing through a sliding glass door in the back of their house. Friday, the city had three shootings within hours. One was in Durkeyville, another was off Gate Parkway, and another near 20th Street in Talleyrand. Those gunshots killed a man in his mid-20s who was standing outside the front door of this employment agency. Three people were shot and the search is on now for two suspects. Shell casings and markers cover the 2100 block of Brooklyn Road. JSO says a suspect fired about 50 shots around 2.30 Sunday afternoon. The men shots. were driving when another car pulled up next to them and began shooting at them. 22-month-old Aiden McClendon was shot and killed. Four men were shot. Shot in the head. Shot in a mass shooting. He was shot oh and killed. Shot to death. Shot, shot. Gunshots. I heard six gunshots. Hot, hot, hot. Bucket. At the start of 2021, I mean, the song old, called Who I Smoke came out and went mega viral. Now, from chat? the outset, this looked like yeah, any like one hip-hop video, right. with a bunch of nice-looking, well-dressed well, young men out on the golf course for an enjoyable day teeing off on the green. Hmm, these young men seem to be known as ATK, okay. Well, it turns out that that ain't the name of their local golf club. In fact, you might have missed something very important if you didn't pay attention at the start of that video. Because when the first guy tees off his golf ball, a bullet shell casing drops to the ground. And once once this oh, subtle reference to shootings has passed, we then- What the federal? Chad, did y'all even catch that in the music video? I, did, I didn't even see that. Bro, who yeah. sees that, bro? Come on, man. Bro, there's no way. Shell casing drops to the ground. I'm Chad, did y'all notice that? Golf club. In fact, you might have missed something very important if you didn't pay attention at the start of that video. Because when the first guy tees off his golf ball, a bullet shell casing drops to the ground. And once what this subtle fuck? reference to shootings has passed, we then begin to hear a very familiar musical sample, Vanessa Carlton's A Thousand Miles. Well, what a charming song to hit a few balls off the green to, eh? And for the first 30 seconds of the video, all we see is our well-dressed protagonists jamming out to some Vanessa Carlton and having a great day on the course. But at a certain point the beat drops and these boys go from tiger woods to tie him up and put him in a woods because what followed was oh one of the God. most diabolical and disrespectful diss songs in hip-hop history this song who i smoke goes on to reference around half a dozen murdered gang members many of whom were I only teenagers when they were killed no real guns appear in this music video only hidden no, he's really a fed to violence like the shell casing dropping to the ground at the start or the toting of fake water pistols instead of real guns so the charming settings of the visuals of this music combined with the demonic gang shit that the rappers are actually speaking about unsurprisingly made this piece of media go mega viral and before you know it it seemed like everybody on social media was singing who I smoke however very <laughs> few people took a step back to understand exactly what or who these gang affiliated golf course gophers were actually talking about since then countless of hilarious reaction videos have been made to who I smoke along with a handful of breakdowns which try to get to the heart of exactly why these two groups in Jacksonville have been beefing for so many years. Now, I've spent the last few weeks taking a closer look at this story, and I would say that until now, nobody has truly captured the magnitude of the wild shit that has gone down between these two groups. And after everything I've learned, I'm honestly convinced that this right here is the bleakest, darkest, and most disrespectful feud in rap, hell, even yeah. gang history. Because- Whoa, Cap, Cap. I just came here to see your- Yo, chat, 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 chat. Yeah, you saw that. I think the most, the most influential gang beef in hip hop history is BDK Big versus him. GDK. Yeah, it's Chicago. Oh, Chicago. BDs, yeah. BDs versus GDs. Look at them niggas been beef for. Or, and, and to be honest with you, I think the second one is fucking New York. Is the Woos versus GDs? I think that's the second one. Jacksonville, KTA versus ATK. Honestly, I said that's probably like three. Or four, because I'll probably be missing one. Because I ain't gonna lie, 
the, yeah, the Wu's I mean, East Coast the, versus West Coast wasn't really like it wasn't really gangs though. Nigga, again, Chicago and New York niggas is dropping back to back, and niggas are so intrigued in the, in the beef. With, with KTA and ATK, I feel like it's too new. Not not the beef being new, obviously, but the beef but actually the coming to the like media. To yeah, the, for, for the beef to come to mainstream is too fresh right now. Yeah, to be honest with you, the third one probably, I'd probably say NBA versus TBG. Nah, that's just, nah, I don't think so. You don't think so? Uh-uh. Fair enough. Bloods and Crips? Nah. I mean, nah. like. That's long time that's ago, the, bro. Like, People that's know like, nowadays that's Bloods. That's like all time. Like, yeah. That's not, like, Bloods and Crips is really hip-hop related. Mm-mm. At all. Maybe if you're not talking about hip-hop. Because in many crazy. ways, the Jacksonville hoods that the boys involved in this story come from are truly some of the most dangerous and deadly in the entire world. Seriously, some of what you're about to hear today is going to make Chirac look like Disneyland. So buckle nah, up, pour a drink, so. roll a woods, and prepare yourself. I don't believe so. Crazy Ain't nothing going to make Chirac look like Disneyland. Yeah, Man, like listen. Niggas, niggas was dying every two weeks in Chicago. And I mean quicker. rappers. I'm not going to like quicker. Oh, yeah. I mean, rappers was dying every two weeks in Chicago. Rappers. And to, still, to this day, they still dying. Bro, every year, you got to say R.I.P. to Chicago member. Man, we almost lost a little reach last week. Like, you feel me? No no funny. We lost FBG Duck. We lost Vaughn. Who else we lose? Chicago, Chicago rappers. Help me out, Coke. Oh, uh, Chicago rappers that what that passed away. We lost Kendrick. LA. We lost Brick. We lost who else? Oh, Jojo. Jojo. Who else? Pappy. Pappy. Who else? Tuka. Tuka was Luski. a rapper. Lusky. It's too many of them. That hip hop has ever seen. J Money. Million people. This one is not for the faint of heart. Today's story takes place in Jacksonville. Little Mr. Fredo, Florida. Yeah. Now, many decades ago, Jacksonville became a consolidated Cap, city yeah, county RP with Duval right, County. Come on. This created one metropolitan area called the City of Jacksonville and Duval County, an enormous area which actually is the most populated city in all of Florida. Now, that's not strictly important for this story, but sometimes you might hear people reference. Jacksonville is the most popular city in all of Florida. Is that true? Yeah. Why? Because Jacksonville is mad large. Miami as a city isn't that big. Referencing things that went down in Jacksonville or Duval County, just know that they're basically one and the same. Now, if you've been a fan of Florida rappers like YNW Melly, then you'll know that guns are readily available in the state of Florida. Of in fact, the majority of people in the state seem to be armed to the teeth. And much like the city itself, the gangs that roam the streets of Jacksonville have a long history too. Over the past few decades, many gangs and gangsters have called Jacksonville, Florida their home. From Rolling Twenties Bloods, to Crips, GDs, and Hispanic gangs like MS-13, fleeing other states and setting up shop in Jacksonville. However, the gangsters that we're interested in for the sake of this story are those talented ones who rap. And when it comes to Jacksonville, one of the biggest names to ever come out of the city is of course, Young Ina Ace. Real name, Kayanta Bullard, Ace was born in Chicago. Oh my God! So moved federal. to Florida as a child. He actually started rapping. He was born in Chicago. 14, finding himself rolling with a crew of rapping G's called the Youngin Gang, a crew apparently founded by Flip the Youngin and Trigger Romo. They were older than me. I was young. Oh, okay. but they name used to spell it like Y-U-N-G. So Ace, along with his Youngin Gang boys, made songs like the early track Go to War, which came along with a music video where they were showing off some heavy artillery. Hell, at one point, a dude even pulls out a World War One looking rifle with a goddamn bayonet at the end. Guess these guys are in the trenches for real, for real. Now, that music video introduced us to a few other familiar faces that were around Ace in the early days of his career. That includes Ace's blood brother, Quan Quan, or Two Times, and his close homie... That was his blood brother? Coke. Shut up, that was his blood brother? Damn, I didn't know that I didn't know they were blood brothers. 
days of his career. That includes Ace's blood brother, Quan Quan, or two times, and his close homie, 23, or RJ. Now, this was Ace's first big breakout song, racking up a whopping 100k views in the first week, going on to rack up a big boy M. This was the song that made Ace a bona fide rapper. And despite a minor setback with Ace getting sent to jail on a juvenile charge, with his first taste for success in the music industry, Ace would continue to flood the market with music and raise his profile. So with a lot of success in the rap game and a solid reputation in the streets, Ace's circle of influence in Jack- I got a donation, yes, death in Chicago, over a thousand or more people that died, even children. <clears throat> there was more than the ones you just listed. Nothing will compare to Chicago. No mainstream rappers will drop a diss and get gone within a week. Where react to Lakers game if you can, it was crazy. I'm not reacting to Lakers game, bro. Jacksonville would continue to grow, and over time, fans would begin to recognize the faces of people in his crew. Other people include Kobe, aka Four, Fast Money Goon, Rollo, Red Dot, D De Niro, Ray Spaz, Trey Shorty. Cra he has his whole gang's neck. Yo, this is so funny. Crazy K, Sosa, or Scotty. Now, at a certain point later on in the story, Ace lost a few of his day one homies and would move away from the Youngin gang, which was originally made up of Ace's day one homies more from the Orange Park and west side of Jacksonville. However, over time and as the story develops, Ace and his remaining friends from the west will grow- See, this is why I said this is why uh, Jacksonville isn't as iconic as Chicago, because let me tell you something. With Chicago gangs, Bro, you can name their whole entire set if you really think about it. Because them niggas had names and they weren't rappers. Nigga, niggas in the chat knew who K.I. was. Niggas in the chat knew who uh, fucking C-Day was. Niggas in the chat knew J-Money. Niggas in the chat knew, like, you feel me? Like, T-Roy, word. Like, you feel me? Like, bro, niggas know DQ. Niggas know Muwap. Niggas know, yeah, they, they turn into rappers now. D-Rose, word, word. Niggas know D-Rose. You feel me? Niggas know KCS Vaughn. Niggas know 051 Melly. That's another one. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't rappers, but you know what I'm saying? That's why I, I like I can't name niggas in Young and Ace game besides Ace and maybe like the, the two people you always mentioned, like 23 or something. But other than that, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know who Wapping the Trapper was till last week. Like, you know? Close to a number of crews on the east side of Jacksonville, HK, forming a new group yeah, of crews insane. which would roll together under the name of ATK. Something which most people seem to understand as standing for Ace's mind. top killers, but for the record, other people have described ATK as potentially aim standing for Ace to kill, aim to kill, or just being short for attack. So this crew, as they were known, would soon become affiliated with the Melvin Park area of Jacksonville, with several people that represent under the ATK banner hailing from there, including the supposed demon of Jacksonville, Queso. Now we're gonna learn more about this guy as the story goes on, but let me tell you, he is super scary. By his own admission, Queso will quite literally kill for anything. I kill you if you're staring at my grandpa Jabot. My mama told me chill, cause I be killing niggas. You for real? Man, for real, I be really killing niggas. I don't tell Damn. lies. All I do is stay fast. Kill any nigga. I do not care where he at. He ain't lying. Damn. That's very federal. <laughs> That's so federal. But why is he so aggressive? Oh no, that nigga sound like Mikey in the booth. <laughs> that nah, that nigga is fair. We've also got Queso's brother, Boss Goon, ATK YBZ, and also affiliated with ATK are the crew 1200, hailing out of 1200 block on the east side, a crew which back in the day has been referred to as 187 or out west. Now this crew is affiliated with an area running from the TIAA Bank Field to Evergreen Cemetery and up to just before 21st Street. Some members of this group have been known to represent under the S4C, meaning Spans or Corbin, a reference to a fallen friend of theirs. And you might also see Jump Out or Cuckoo Gang affiliated with members of this group too. And hailing from this area are several familiar faces such as Spinner Benz and his blood brother Whopper with the Chopper, aka. Are Big. they brothers? I didn't even know that. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie, they do look alike. Now that I'm looking they at this do. picture. Like, yeah, side by side, they do look alike. <laughs> they do look alike. <laughs> you know what's so crazy? I called, I don't know if you were in the stream, but I called Whopper Spinner Benz when he was in an internet money vlog. Yeah, 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 yeah. They niggas look alike. <laughs> Gucci, as well as AT Michi, Bevel 5 or B5, Lil Popper, Greenlight, Lil Leaky, and Shook. So that's the ATK crew. Now let's have a look at their ops, KTA. But first, a word from our sponsor. I'd like to thank God damn. <laughs> gang, it's killed them all. Not really. Really you, you got a whole music video. Don't worry, chat. 
I got you, don't be skip. Like 80K has its origins in the Youngin gang, it's been said that KTA has its roots in a more organized crew of OG Jacksonville gangsters called PCE, or Problem Child Entertainment. Now, this is a legit gang that was really dismantled in a 2017 RICO case. This saw over 10 senior members from the PCE operation facing racketeering charges for multiple counts of murder and firearms offenses. Now, this group had actually attracted a significant amount of attention from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office following a tragic January 2016 incident when a 22 month old baby Aiden McClendon was sadly killed after being sat in the baby seat of a car that was targeted in a drive-by shooting. The police were able to connect those bullets that killed that baby to the PCE crime organization and both of the shooters in this case were convicted of murder. Two guilty verdicts were read, one for Henry Hayes and one for Kwame Richardson who were tried separately. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors say both were targeting a rival gang member when 22-month-old Aiden McClendon was shot and killed while he was sitting in the car with his mother on the city's east side. But to make things even more crazy, it's been suggested that that 22-month-old baby that was killed was actually a direct relative of Whopper with a Chopper and Spinner Benz. But anyway, regardless what? of that, with this kind of fuck shit going down in the streets affecting 22-month-old children, it's no surprise that the Jacksonville cops ended up cracking down hard on PCE. But growing up in the midst of the budding gang wars on the streets of Jacksonville is a young rapper by the name of Fulio aka Julio Fulio, aka Lil Six. Now this nickname is derived from the Six or Six block in Jacksonville where Fulio hails from. A territory apparently stretching from 45th and Moncrief up to Avenue B, with Fulio specifically hailing from the Hilltop Village Apartments. Now this area is the north side of Jacksonville, the area which Fulio says is also the most violent part of the city. I'm from the north side of Jacksonville, 1646 West 45th Street, Bricks, Six. Yeah, that's the most violent side of Jacksonville. Now, Fulio is considered the most hated rapper in Florida, and it's easy to see why when you consider how he came up. Fulio said that he had to buy his very first gun for protection when he was in just the seventh grade, because apparently he was already beefing with grown men with bigger guns. A nigga got his first gun in motherfucking seventh grade. He said he's going to seven, the deuce five, so. After that, it was a rap. We'll always be people with grown, older niggas. So shit, oh, yeah. they always Seven had grade is crazy. advantage and shit of us. Like, they always had the guns and the cars to pull up on us. And you feel we never had that shit. Fulio's upbringing seems like it was nothing but pain. In fact, his father was murdered when Fulio was only 13 years old, being shot in the head twice in a brutal attack. Oh my God. Ah. Retribution after a man that Fulio's father had beaten up a month before came to get get back. Fulio oh, even said that he witnessed his first murder at close range at the young age of 12. Rhymes, I saw a nigga get shot in this shit, but this was in, a, in my other dog, this was in West Jack, I was probably like 12 years old. Jack, he beat the shit though, my dog boo boo, but yeah, point blank range, nigga. I was 12 years old saying that type of shit though, that shit went nuts. Apparently, Fulio also got shot in the leg getting off the school bus, age 50. We getting out the bus and shit. I ain't yeah, thinking nothing else, though. I got money for my own books, man. I ain't yeah. thinking nothing else. Like, it's a regular day. This is my first day of school. Mind you not, this is my first day getting, because I got kicked out of school, another school for fighting. So this is my first day in the alternative school. <laughs> so boom, nigga had ran through the cut when the shoot, and I got hit on my motherfucking hip. One time. So having described Jacksonville as a literal war zone, then it's no surprise to find out that apparently Fulio had lost around 15 friends to gun violence before he had even turned 20. In fact, you'll hear Fulio telling his deceased friends to rest up in his music frequently. Names like Vonte, Kendre, and Nooski pop up in Fulio's music frequently, but thankfully being forced to literally dodge bullets on the way to school in the morning as a kid didn't dampen Fulio's spirit. Apparently he was always a charismatic yeah, young spitter like that, and was apparently rapping yeah. his entire childhood despite the violence going on. That's treacherous for real. Cause I ain't gonna lie, there's certain yeah. hoods like you'll go to where they ain't really beef, it's just a hood, you feel me? But nigga, this shit, like, I ain't gonna lie, nigga, gunshots and walking to school and gunshots. That's nigga, crazy. It's crazy. Nah, bro. walking to school is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. That's crazy. Like, like what the fuck, all, my word. nigga? My life is totally all different. Like, this shit is crazy. Right. Really value your life, y'all. The first song of Fulio's that got a few hundred thousand views was the track Coming Up. And off the back of the success of that song, he would drop mixtapes like Who I Am before leveling up with the sequel called Industry Invasion. Over time, Fulio would gradually pick up a bigger buzz and more attention in the industry, eventually landing in the studio with some big name producers. Most notably, Atlanta legend Zaytoven, creating bangers like How You Do It, and the fully Zaytoven produced mixtape Six Toven. Now, we'll cover the specific and significant music 
music releases as they pop up during the beef. But for now, let's just focus who's affiliated with Fulio and his six block crew. Also hailing from the six, oh no Drizzy, God. is Fulio's longtime friend and frequent collaborator. Oh, this man did research. There's Fulio's blood cousin, Zion cousin. Brown, aka yeah, Tweaking one. Jit or TJ. There's Tiki, aka T Shots, Trey D, aka Eight, K Shorty, Spaz two times, not to be confused with Spaz from 80k, Lil PD, aka 35, Fulio's young G Bibby, and Dirk, another close friend of Fulio's who was murdered all the way back in 2014 as part of that PCE beef. So that's the majority of Fulio and his six block outlined. But as time and beef went on in Jacksonville, the KTA crew formed out of six block and a few other Jacksonville crews that were all beefing with KTA crews. This includes an affiliated crew from a hood called Vontaland, which includes blocks such as Callaway Cove, the Washington Heights Apartments, and Ken Knight Drive. Are they close Vontaland to each other? Is where Folio's friend Rod K is from. You've also got A Block, which really just refers to the Arlington area in Jacksonville, an area which is geographically in the east of Jacksonville, but considered the south side by the people that live there. And now this brings us to the Y and R crew. Sometimes referred to as Dankway or A Block in the past, Y and R is an Arlington based squad of extremely feared gangsters in Jacksonville, with many of the following members having been associated with, but for the record, not proven to have been involved with a lot of the more serious altercations between these two crews. You've got people like YNR Mookie, Cho, Bree, Lil Ron, YNR Slugger T, who for the record, being one of the only white guys involved with these crews, seems to attract some pretty crazy and kind of funny comments online. For the record, I think YNR <laughs> Slugger T looks like a pretty tough guy who looks right at home in YNR, and for the record, I also do not want any problems. Anywho, also repping these parts is Baby9, aka Juju, Lil9, and Mr. Beatbox himself, Spot and Gotham, who's apparently originally from Lackawanna on Jacksonville's west side, but he's known to rep Arlington. Showing love to his set by spending one of the early bags that he got on this bust down YNR chain. And funnily enough, on the day of recording this, I just found out that he apparently dropped that chain off a jet ski. Anyway. Yeah, another piece, man. 30, 30 ball in the fucking water. 30 ball in the water, bro. Like I said before, that's not everybody that's associated with Fulio, <laughs> he's Six Block, or KTA, man. but just some important faces that are going to be relevant for this story. And just for the record, so that it's super easy for you guys to understand, Arlington is from A Block, which is considered the south side of Jacksonville. Fulio is from Six Block, considered the north side of Jacksonville most dangerous side, so that's north and south under KTA territory. You've got Young Ian Ace, who is originally from the west side, but eventually- Wait, all these niggas look far away. How look up TV, nigga. Nigga, but like, imagine driving 30, 40 minutes just to go spin. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. Probably quicker on the highway. Hell yeah. Nigga, y'all think that's nothing, spin. that's nothing, that's nothing. 80k ended up including a lot of people yeah, it's not that long. on the east side. It's like, it's like basically 15, what you're going on. I ain't driving no 40 minutes to go spin on no island. Nigga, that's not 40. Nah, that, 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 that drive right there is not 40 minutes. <laughs> How far is it? That's like 20. 15, 20. Nigga, that shit far, nigga. No, you not can really. hop on the highway. Not really. 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 Not that's just stupid. Jacksonville is north and south beefing with east and west. I hope that makes it a bit easier to understand. So, now you know the people involved, the turf being fought over, and the Who history of crime in the city, you're ready to take a closer look at why these two groups started feuding, research. and how this became nigga, one that of the most the federal informant. In that nigga is the federal informant. That nigga's a CI. No, he's literally writing out the case for him. When he was asked why <laughs> rappers in Jacksonville, Chapter three. Fulio said that there the were feds three looking just like, oh shit, oh, that. It'd be a respect thing, then it'd be a nigga neighborhood, where you from? And then, it, and then it be the case for him. Like you just, you disrespecting my dead homeboys, and now I want to dish your dead. You get what I'm saying? Well, you are going to see a heck of a lot of all three of those things going on throughout this beat. Weirdly, apparently, fully. Hold on, my food's here. Damn, this is an hour and fifty-five minutes. This level movie. of black is really hard to keep up with, though. I'm not gonna lie. This a whole movie. How about like this is black as hell. This <laughs> feel me like <laughs> this level of blackness, like. I got this one word, but I don't, know, I don't know if it's TOS or not. Nah, it is, it is, it is. I know what you're trying to say. The word that sounds like, the, the sound like the animal? Nah, it ends in, it ends in T-R-Y. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, you good, you good, you good. That's this that. is crazy, like. Nah, this is a crazy level of them animals with that striped tail. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of that shit going on, bro. A whole lot of that shit going on. Like, yo, I'm looking at these niggas talk, like, I'm just, looking, just looking at these niggas, like, yo, like. <laughs> no, that's not that. That's why I can't. Like, I need to come to the suburbs. Like, the suburbs is fire. Like, 
OG Trey. I'm not going to say too much, but yeah. All right, come on. Fulio was even cool with some of the ATK members back in the day, with Fulio having said numerous times that some of the ATK members, like Wapo with a chopper, having appeared in one of his early music videos. Wapo and all them type nigga, they used to be in my videos type shit. Meanwhile, Spinner Benz has said himself that he's been involved in street beats since about. the early years of 2012. Now look, it's pretty difficult to trace things back right to the beginning when these beasts kicked Spin off up with whoever was involved back in the early days. And it's clear that a lot of bad you. blood in the Jacksonville gang community yeah. has been passed down from older generations of gangsters that have been beefing over all sorts of things for years and years. But at the very least, there are a handful of inciting incidents that can help explain some of the earliest catalysts in the beef between ATK and KTA. The killing of 22-month-old Aiden McClendon on January 2016 was an early milestone in the PCE gang war. It's been alleged that the drive-by that ended up killing that child was a direct retaliation for a shooting that happened earlier that day. Direct but when you look at that particular case, it was actually revealed that what? things had kicked off a year before this, with these two crews facing off at a Kodak Black concert in Jacksonville. Apparently, mm -hmm. Kodak was on the road playing a show in Jacksonville when members from both sides found themselves in attendance. First Coast right. News published an article about the Aidan McClendon case, which suggested that it was actually a turned-down handshake at this Kodak Black show, which led to a fist mm -hmm. fight, which led to tit-for-tat shooting things ultimately culminating in what? the Aiden McClendon case. This beef was apparently- You refused to shake his hand so we so slapped him. So nah, so that nigga uh, gangster. Uh, crazy. So basically, he was trying to call truce. The nigga didn't want to call truce and it led to more violence. He said fuck that. Slapped him. That little kid got shot. Just call it truce, man. Just call it truce. Between members of PCE and 187 Out West, the Some niggas you don't want to call truce and eighty. I ain't gonna lie, there's some niggas I know are definitely never called truce in my documentary? life. But is it worth killing a baby for? No. I, well, I don't think that, no, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but. No, I know, no, I know that, but what I'm drums, saying is bro, if they call the truth, nothing nigga. happens. If your ops got hundred round drums, bro, you got nothing but a pocket knife, bro, trust me. Be like, but you'll know what happened do. before the before oh, the dude probably tried so to November 2015, do the truce. These two crews have a beef over a handshake yes. at the Kodak Black concert. In December 2015, Suge, real name Avery McKnight, is killed in a drive-by that injured two others, including a three-year-old child. Dying. In the last 90 right. minutes, we've learned three Fuck people were shot, and the search is on now for two suspects. JSO says they spoke like to a right. witness who saw a black Toyota Camry speed off from this area. This is the area where the shooting happened. The man who died was actually shot right on the front porch of the two-story house you see just down the street with the rusted roof. And for the record, it's been referenced in both songs and YouTube documentaries that somehow a bicycle was involved in the Suge killing. Now, as we get into 2016, this is a period where the beef between these two crews gets a little bit hazy. There's plenty of unsubstantiated rumors floating. Wait. Hmm. Didn't, didn't Fulio say some shit like, I mm -hmm. wish Suge had a new bike or some shit, and, mm -hmm. and, and when I see you? Is that the bike yeah. he's talking about? He said he shot him yeah. off the bike. He said he got shot off his bike. bike. I was fooling you not in federal law. Shooting a lot of shit that he confessed to the killing of Aiden McClendon. I'm sure there was he plenty of blood between these two groups in 2016. Yeah. Might as well. But the one thing we know for sure is that the most devastating escalation of this beef took place on May 27th, 2017. On this day, Fulio's blood cousin, 18-year-old Zion Brown, aka Tweaking Jit, was at home with his younger sisters, aged 16 and 9. Allegedly, somebody from the ATK side of the beef smashed through a glass door on the house with a brick. Entering what? Brown's home, firing multiple shots, killing Zion Brown, and hitting his two younger sisters. What? Bro, nigga ran through his crib with a brick? Bro, they wanted that nigga dead dead. Bro, I don't even think it's ever that serious, to be honest. Bro, YK, YK, YK. <laughs> That's crazy. Niggas slide through blocks all the time, YK. But to Bro. break into a nigga house? Like, trust me, I've slipped with, oh, slip. with a brick. But this is crazy. <laughs> Bro, that's some, that's some crash dummy shit. Bro, what? A brick? He got charged with murder. I mean, that was crash dummy shit. Like, It's like, look, now you're in jail for life. It's like, what's the point? Like, the teenager tells me Mr. Jax that her family was woken up about 1.30 in the morning Saturday when a brick came crashing through a sliding glass door do? in the back of their house. 18-year-old Zion Brown was the only adult in the home along with two teens, a 9-year-old and a 6-year-old boy. According to witnesses, Thomas broke out oh, a sliding no, glass scary, door, bro. walked inside and began shooting, hitting a 9-year-old and a teenager. What? They are recovering. 
18-year-old Zion Brown died at the hospital. Deontre Thomas, aka Trey you imagine Ford, was identified like... as the shooter and ended up facing murder and double attempted murder charges. Police make an arrest in a shooting that killed an 18-year-old. Today, police said Deontre Thomas was the shooter. They charged him with murder. Story goes, the wounded 16-year-old girl who survived the incident identified Deontre as the shooter, apparently already knowing him as a mutual friend on Facebook. Now, here's where things get a bit... Chad, what the fuck yeah. did he do? Bro, for a nigga to do all that, bro, bro, look up with the brakes. What do you that mean, Zion? Had previously been charged as an accomplice in a no, robbery. No, I'm talking about what did the nigga do for him make, to make him do that? Oh, thanks. Case They're saying about to right here. As his co-defendant. Now, a lot of speculation has been thrown around since this incident as to whether Ace had any knowledge of the hit or if he or somebody he knows was even an accomplice there that day. For the record, there is absolutely no public evidence that Ace was involved in that hit. However, the news did say that they believe that Trey Shorty was not alone when he entered Zion Brown's home. Investigators believe Thomas was not alone when he shot mm. Brown and two children. Probably Regardless, not. Trey Shorty was later found guilty of the murder of Zion Brown and sentenced to life in prison life. where he remains Holy. today having lost all of his freedom as well yeah, as his hair. now zion's sister even ended up dropping a tribute song for life her, in jail, see you later, and her involvement in this story is going to get crazy later on so oh just God. remember her ain't you nobody is standing but regardless after what happened to zion crazy, brown bro. even with trey shorty in jail never the kta like side this. of the beef knew that somebody else was First involved in murder charges and they were looking for get back in the months that followed yeah. the ops were hungry for revenge on the atk side of the beef in a may 2018 interview with my mixtapes <gasps> Ace said that oh, during this period, shooting, his house um, had been ooh. shot up with his own mother inside it. This is be my room right here. My boy shot my house up. I was right there on the bed, me and my little brother, Quan Quan. They shot my mama's house up. They shot this part right up. My mama was in the room. They shot that bitch up. My, whole, yeah. my house always got shot up. They always spent on my shit. But then we doubling back, though, for real. Come here, though. However, I doubt nah, this. Nah, what nah. the hell? <laughs> church, church. Man, that ain't nothing to be proud about, what? bro. That's crazy. You niggas think this shit is a game. Niggas said they always spit it on my shit. Oh, no, what? You got, you got something on the little side of your lip, bro. No, no, get that off. I'm, sure I'm looking at his lips like that. So you're going to help him get it off? What? Nigga, I'm just saying that shit don't look good, bro. I'm saving it for that later. That good. What? You know, hey, <laughs> nah, this yo. is gay. Nah, this thing is gay. Everybody, talking right. about the food. Possibly yeah. ever imagined yeah, just okay. how bad things could have gotten following this incident. Because soon Ace would be facing tragedy on a scale I don't think I've ever seen in hip hop or even crime history before. I'm talking about that terrifying and tragic night when Ace lost three of his closest friends mm -hmm. right in front of his very eyes. Now, this shit was crazy. On Tuesday, the 5th four. of June, 2018, Young and Ace was out celebrating the 18th birthday of his close friend, 23, oh, aka RJ, 18. real name Royale Devon Smith Jr. They were seen oh, with Ace's birthday. blood brother, Quan Quan, real name Trayvon Bullard, as well as their other friend, Four, aka Kobe, real name Jacoby Deshard Groover. Oh, and the four boys were seen posting on social media in good spirits on their way to dinner. Yeah, I kept school calling them right now. Me, nigga. I don't know, maybe it ain't nothing to say at all. They gave away their location. Crazy. Niggas on his ass. Like, that's niggas on his ass like this. Bro. Nah, that's crazy. I couldn't even sleep. But when you're on my like ass that, like that, you don't, you, don't, you don't post your location until you leave, bro. That's a fact. <laughs> you leave that shit like, like you drop it. <laughs> <laughs> so these four young men were. That's just crazy. Out oh, celebrating and having a meal at the Wasabi Japanese Steakhouse in Jacksonville's St. John's Town Center. This is an open air mall in the southeast of Jacksonville. Now, while they were there, they made numerous posts to social media. And perhaps it was these very posts right outside the restaurant that they ate at that alerted the ops of Ace and his friend's location. I mean, yes. this image, for example, uh, yeah. shows the 100%. red shutters. Nigga, at niggas know where that spot's at? Well, come on. Yeah, oh, okay. If you live there, yeah, you if you yeah live you're, there, gonna, right you're gonna there, recognize you know, you know the shit. Know what the fuck that shit is. And, and especially when it's like a ball or something, like it's easy to notice when some, you got somebody at a ball. At the back of that wasabi restaurant. And I mean no disrespect, but I've never been to Jacksonville in my entire life, so I was able to spot the exact place Come that they on, were standing on Google Maps within minutes of pulling of up this area on Street View, not even looking that hard. Now, Ace has gone on to say in numerous interviews that he really regrets letting his guard down on this day. I don't never, see, we don't never go out to eat because we don't do nothing fun. Right, yeah. So that was like our first time going out like that. And like, I ain't gonna lie, I, I, we were slipping. According to Ace's Vlad TV interview, Slippery. after the meal, the four boys were hanging out in the area and things were cool, perhaps mm. too cool. We was coming from uh, Wasabi. 
It was my little brother's 23rd birthday. And, uh, you know, we were just hanging. We pulled up to the light. We were leaving the shit. We was really hanging. Like I said, we were hanging out, though. We were, you know what I'm saying? We were just hanging out, though. We was, we had our guard down. That's what it was. Now, allegedly, a witness said that there was some kind of argument or altercation between the four guys and some other boys at the location they had dinner. However, this is a detail that Young and Ace has never acknowledged in an interview. However, what he has mm -hmm. stated is that he felt that there were people hiding and waiting in that parking lot for his friends to leave. Okay, ain't nobody just going to just, just, just creep up on me like that. Yeah. They have to be sitting outside. So after leaving the restaurant, the four boys got in a car and drove to the intersection at Town Center Parkway and St. John's Bluff. With the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office saying that when they got to the red light, another unidentified vehicle pulled up alongside their Chevy sedan, opening fire and then speeding off. Police say the shooter or shooters pulled up in a car next to the victims at the 295 and Town Center Parkway stoplight before them. opening fire. Last night, we showed you one side of the Chevy sedan full. Ace know who shot him. Ace definitely know, Ace definitely know the killers. He's gonna get, he's, he's gonna try to get them niggas. Full of bullet holes. This scene was frankly a bloodbath. Some have said that as many as 120 bullets were fired from automatic Jesus. weapons. And Ace himself later described the scene of the crime in a harrowing complex interview. Oh, you hear shots? When I, I think like, 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 I'm gonna hit my hand right here. I'm gonna hit my hand, my phone drop. Come on, bro. Not, not the time, not the time, not the time, not the time, bro, not the time. Fortunately, Young and Ace survived the shooting, but he was hit eight times. However, all what? eight times. But Draco. With a Draco. Oh, 50 cent shit. Nah, that's crazy. 50 cent wasn't even shot with a Draco. <laughs> nah. Are we talking 50 cent shit? Like, like nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a Draco, though. God, was on, God was on his yeah. side, bro. Damn. Three of his friends were less fortunate mm -hmm. and lost their lives. Ace's blood brother, Trayvon Bullard, aka Quan Quan, aka two times, oh, shot three face times right including a shot to the head. 23, aka RJ, real name Royale Devon Smith Jr., was shot around five times. And four, aka Kobe, aka Jacoby Deshard Groover, was shot around 12 times. Oh I can't imagine God, how hurt Ace's bullets? heart and body were after this incident. Ace was seen laid up in the hospital, hurt pretty bad, but He's managed the only to survive and recover in what can only really? be described as a genuine miracle. Yeah. By the way, the police viewed him as a suspect, so they didn't give him any antibiotics either. Oh yeah. What? Yeah, he was locked up. He was he was locked up in the hospital. So they, they, they thought they he killed his own homies. He, they, uh, to the police. So he had no medication and no antibiotics while he was in the hospital. But it can't have been easy. In fact, a clip even circulated on social media, seemingly depicted Ace in the hospital, looking kind of delirious off the painkillers, replaying the incident. But to make things even worse, Ace ended up getting done pretty dirty by the authorities and the American health system. Because Ace apparently didn't have any medical insurance, and the sheriff's department that should have stepped in and made sure that he got the medical care that he needed, no medical didn't insurance. do that. With Ace basically not getting the medicine he needed and being thrown out of the hospital early, with numerous bullets still inside him. He'd been shot eight times, and I believe at that point we had three or four or eight bullets inside of him still, um, considering he really needed to go to a hospital. Because he didn't have insurance, the hospital wouldn't take the bullets out of him. So while he was in custody, it was really became that part. It was the responsibility Bro, of the sheriff's the office to make sure is. he got the medical care he needed. Sheriff's office didn't give him medical care. They didn't give him antibiotics. And they basically just left him in there. Ace would lay a post. Bro. Yeah, he feel. walked out the hospital with eight bullets in him. Nigga, you got to be a strong nigga to do yeah, that. Yeah, watch me walk out, nigga. Bro, even imagine, imagine even just waking up in a hospital, and they say, "Yo, all three of your homies died." You're the only survivor. You're the only survivor, and you got eight shots in your body, and you st and you walking out with the eight shots in your body. <clears throat> nigga, that can fuck up you all these questions. Bro, that can fuck up a nigga's mental, bro. Instagram following the incident, saying he got eight shots to the body but survived, as well as suggesting that he had tried to shield his brother 23 from the bullets, something he elaborated on in heartbreaking detail in this DJ Vlad interview. So I tried, I, tried to, I tried to shield him and see, make sure he was good, but I couldn't shield everybody though. Ace went on to memorialize his three fallen brothers in his flesh, tattooing all three of their faces onto his stomach. This is his name two times, right in the middle. Okay. 23 on the side. That's 23, my best friend. Okay. 
when it was even crazier, YK? What? When it was even crazier? What? I don't know how true it is, but from what I was told, 23's mom is blaming him for their death. I mean, I don't understand why so he posted that location. Nigga, so. his parents do not fuck with him. It's just not something you can do. Hey, like, yeah. you can't hey, I, I love the location. Like. So. Now, initially, cops put it out there publicly that this was gang related. Right now, JSO is searching for whoever fired the shots that killed three teenagers and sent a fourth to the hospital. JSO says the shooting was not a random act and that one of the victims and the survivor are gang members. Keontae Bullard, known as Young Ean Ace, is the sole survivor of a quadruple shooting not far from the St. John's Town Center. His three teenage friends, Trayvon Bullard, Royal Devon Smith Jr., and Jacoby Deshad Grover, were killed. Ace's friend spoke with Action News Jax anonymously. Yeah, they killed three people, but one of them still alive, so whatever they come back for. However, despite Jacksonville's... Wait, what? Toby Deshad Grover oh, were killed. Ace's friend spoke with Action News Jax anonymously. Yeah. Yeah, they killed three people, one of still alive. They Who's saying back? this? Allegedly, one of Ace's friends. Okay. Yeah, I... They killed three people, but one of them still alive, so what would they come back for? However, despite Jacksonville's amazing detectives working out that this was gang related, there was zero arrests made in the case. Another detail Ace recounted with great. Zero arrests made in the case, by the way. Them niggas are still loose. Discomfort. Dead. Dead. Or, or dead. Yeah. yeah. This whole situation. Oh, no. You can say, does that spin a bitch? No. <laughs> Oh wait, no, scratch that. The cops no, actually wise. did make one Speaking arrest on. after this incident, Ace himself, who ended up in jail, still injured, for violating his probation because he had been Yeah, he violated his probation. seen at a gun store earlier no, that day, hard, like, holding an unloaded firearm in a gun store, which apparently he wasn't allowed to do. Police say Kenyanta Bullard, who is also known by his rapper name, Young and Ace, is charged with violation of probation. Last October, Bullard was sentenced to 31 months probation after appearing before a Clay County judge and pleading no contest to accessory after the fact. Well, police say he had a firearm on him, which is against his... Restroom, restroom, restroom. restroom, restroom, restroom. restroom chat, hold on. Probation was fun, I'm not gonna lie. Did what? you just say probation was fun? Why can't yeah. you did, nigga? Hey, what's what's up with you, bro? What was made, so fun about it, probation, man? Probation it's made, is not fun. It's made doing <laughs> bad things more fun. Like, like yo, I can't get caught my PO. Yo, you oh, feel me? Like, oh, nigga. Oh, no, no. What? This what nigga sounds stupid, man. man. Yeah, nigga sounds dumb, dumb as hell. Man. You sound dumb as hell. Nah, I was a mad program, so they put me this one program, bro. Like, they had, they had this <laughs> cake. I just tried to look at that thing, Every bro. time I went, every time I went, they had this cake. You on the program, yo, the cake was mad good, my nigga, yo. So the court, you court, like court, probation court, for the probation you like court, probation listen, listen. for the cake. Listen, listen. Yeah, you I got went to, it. Nah, this is program, oh, and I went to right. court, and my lawyer was like, "Yo, I'm gonna get you on probation and 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 out the program." I was like, "Wait, I, I can't fuck with the program, no." She like, yo, yo, "What?" Yo, yo, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, sorry to bring it up, but let's not flex. Let's get it. Nah, nigga, let's get. I'm not trying to flex. I'm trying to talk real cool, nigga. I was a cool. He said he liked the probation cake. Yeah, I'll that go for Bishop, all my niggas in there. Like, yo, what's oh, good, yeah. man? <laughs> I said it was good, bro. Like, what's up with you? Yeah, yeah, I said it was good. I said, nigga, I was the first one. The Hollywood, I said it was good, nigga. Yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Rock Holly at your risk. I said it was good, nigga. I said, what up, bro? Yo, Snag, I seen that, right, bro. Man. Dead mook. I mook? Nah, it's not, not, not you, not you, the other nigga. Yo, yo I, Snag, I Snag. get mad at me when I just said some crazy lit. shit. My probation lit though. Look at us singing the song. Especially my last date. Like, last right, date. Like it, not it, a no problem, bro. Last date. The, the niggas heard the nigga, my niggas heard my PO say, I yo, why can't it's last date? Niggas bro, like, Ooh, everybody fuck. started clapping. Oh, hold on. Hold on. The whole niggas started clapping. Shut the fuck up. What is wrong with him? This nigga, man. Fuck with you. Probation, of course. So this morning he is, is in jail, set to make his first appearance flex, in less than an hour from now. It appears some people, though, are a bit upset and angry about Bullard's arrest. JSO says its communication center received nearly 700 calls in about an hour and a half's time.
time because of a social media post yeah, related to the arrest. Door. They say the post advises he is supposed to be in the hospital right now, but is in jail instead. Kent, when we put Kenyatta Bullard's image on the news that night, someone who had been at shooters here on University Boulevard recognized him from just hours earlier. Hours before the shooting, snitch. he was shopping at shooters on University Boulevard. So they had Ace all up in court denying him bail while he was still suffering from his injuries. Oh, six bullets cool. still in his body and Ace much. struggling to even stand. And after getting to jail, <laughs> things didn't get better for yeah, Ace because they, they made him body. shave off his trademark hair and refused to let him go it to is not his funerals. And hell, apparently Shh, at one point they even tried to give Ace the YMW Melly treatment. My nigga, let me watch the video. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Didn't let him go to his brother's funeral. Shut up, bro. Oh, Zaddy. Zaddy, Zaddy. Bro, y'all niggas talking OD. For real, shut up. Shut the fuck up. Damn. Shooting on Ace himself. They were like, like I said, a lot of people, they were blaming me for it. Like, even the police would tell my mama that, oh, I did it. Later that month, thankfully, Ace's lawyer was able to get him out of jail, but not scot-free. He was placed on house arrest and had his probation reinstated. But at least he was free and able to get back to what really matters. No, attention. not sweet vengeance, music. Laying in the hospital bed, they shots to my body and on my mind and my brothers. They say, them three didn't make it. Tears full of pain, no other way I can take it. Heartbroken, body filled with wounds, the jail ain't giving my medication. Stuck in confinement, wondering where the hell is my destination. Seeing my mama cry is my motivation. I know I'm blessed, God here to save me. Some say I'm a walking miracle. So Ace got out of jail and channeled his emotion and his pain, quite literally, into his music. Was with a headline track nice. titled Pain, with his song Pain reflecting on the incident and his feelings about it becoming his biggest song at the time. The song Pain was from his Life I'm Living mixtape, which for the record also had the NBA Youngboy assisted banger Gifted. Which makes sense to me because from having listened to quite a lot of Young and Ace, I feel like my best description of him is like a Floridian NBA Youngboy who's actually a bit easier to understand. Anywho, thankfully, Young and Ace was able to survive this tragic incident still breathing and still recording. However, there was one person not quite as happy as me to see Ace survive, and that was Folio. Because if you think disrespecting the dead is somehow something new that was invented by these guys recently, you are mistaken. Because not long after the shooting happened, Folio took to social media, not only giving the impression that he knew something about the shooting, but also suggesting that he initially thought Ace had passed away too. <laughs> the boy lost the Fortnite match. <laughs> I took over the uh... Cold summer alert, man. <laughs> Two, three pack, man. Ace pack, bitch. I don't know what happened to the nigga Ace and his brother and shit. Get yeah, well, Ace, you know. Condolences to your family. F what the fuck? Street, you should know. If you know, call me real. Quando Rondo, you a bitch. You're not from here. So, what the pressure about a depressed ass nigga if you in the streets accept the consequences? Where's Wait, mercy? he's beefing with Quando? Clearly. Who is this nigga that beat him up before, bro? I ain't gonna lie. Fuck with other nigga, I don't give a fuck. Fuck, nigga, no, I don't even really fuck with Ace like that. And I don't really too much give a fuck about none of the situation. But you know, nobody deserves to die. But you know, karma is real. Fuck a nigga talking about, and all you outside rappers that's mad. In fact, it almost seemed like every single day that passed, Fulio would find a new way to disrespect Ace and his fallen friends. He was having t-shirts printed. Fulio took to his IG story oh to tell God. his fans he was smoking on the box. Going as far to call them by their government names just in case the police's case wasn't tight enough. Royal, Royal Smith, this that OX, who else that is? Quack, quack. Da, da, da. Around a month after the shooting, Folio dropped the song Fuck That, which had disses aimed towards Young and Ace and references towards the hit, with Folio saying he puts on his ski mask, calls up P. These niggas mad. We up like five bodies in the field. Put on my ski, call up P. I'm trying to shoot up. I'm trying to shoot some threes. And tries to shoot threes, saying that chopper turned a. Are you a demon? Will that chopper turn the whole team to angel dust? Ace's team to dust, Christ. saying he could have killed a rapper, saying his team are five. That chopper, Ace's team to field. dust, saying he could could have killed a rapper, Listen, but Lil Ron fucked the drill up. <laughs> well, Lil Ron was on the drill. It's mad federal. Could have well, definitely in custody after that. Oh, like 4K? Like what the fuck? Could have killed a rapper, it. but Lil Ron fucked the drill up. Could have killed a rapper, saying his team are. These niggas mad, we up like five, five bodies, bodies up. Film. And on the chorus of the song, Folio did one of the craziest things I've ever seen in a rap beef ever, saying that the whole- And on the other, 
He dropped the address. And on the other end, I heard the whole city want to murder me. I'll drop my address. I'm on 1646 West 45th Street. I ain't gonna lie. That's, that's Hilltop. This is, what I mean, the he, oh, he always, what? he always said, I mean, everyone knows where Hilltop is. Yeah, though. they already yeah. know that, though. They already know he where always, he always, he always. Let's, let's keep it out of it, though. He not, he not there no more. He's he not there no more. Yeah. 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 But he was always, he was always yelling on Hilltop, though. So, I mean, like, that's not really nothing. Him and then wrapping his actual home address. Now, this perhaps wasn't. I ain't gonna lie, though. Whoever moved in, nigga, get the fuck out. <laughs> I go, oh, probably oh, value oh, on that bitch. Homeless. That, that shit nigga. probably dirt nah. cheap right now. Yeah, yeah, property value on that, that house, bro. <laughs> I go lie. Yo, Chad, should we check out that shit on Zillow? <laughs> yeah, go for it. Look how much it is. One, six. They probably don't even have outdoors. Six, four, six, west. One, six, four, six. You might do pickups out there, nigga. West, 45th Street. It's only pickups. Only pickups, nigga. No delivery. Hell no. Yo, this shit is ridiculous. Yeah, it is in Hilltop. It says two. Wow. Yeah, it's Hilltop. Hilltop Village Apartments. It says two weeks ago. Oh, nah. What's the price on that thing? I ain't gonna lie, Hilltop looks nice though from the pictures. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah, everything looks nice from the pictures. You walk, you see 11 Kodaks walking around. <laughs> <laughs> nigga, look out the right. window, see 13 niggas with wicks in their hair. <laughs> all right. It's probably on the Google image, nigga, if you look it up. <laughs> Chat, don't it not look nice? I go on Street View. Nice. No, nigga said, "Look, what? That's not it. That's not it. That is it. <laughs> that's no, yeah, that. It still looks pretty solid, though. Nigga, that should look like. No, that that solid. You, you want to live there, Red? Right? I'm good. That should look no street. I don't see one street light. If I go on on Street Street View, nigga, use their flashlights, their car lights. Nigga, use a fucking iPhone torch to get to their crib, nigga. We got lanterns out there. So is this? Is this shit? Is this shit? Hold on. Is this shit up for sale or what? It says eight hundred thirty-three, eight hundred thirty-three dollars a day. That's pretty high, don't you think? Yeah, all right. Nah, that's really not that high. You know, actually, for the area, hell yeah, it's high. Nah. Wait, why? I'm about to sleep in my man. car, nigga. That's a fact. Yeah, I'm gonna be holding and sleeping over there, nigga. That's a 60 40. The way I look, I can get mistaken for anybody. I can't be over there. If I'm living over there, nigga, I'm shaving my hair. I'm bald. All right, all right. Let's go back Facts. to it. I'm going out in a white face, nigga. Someone said, I'll pull up to Hilltop Village and play Who I Smoke right now for three bands. No, I'll do yeah. it. Let's do it. Let's all pitch in. Let's all pitch in. Go live. Go live. Nigga, oh, you nah, want right. to see him that much? Yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, guys just want to see him that All right, come on. To kill him and then wrapping his actual home address. Now, this perhaps wasn't such a good idea, considering the fact that Fulio would later reveal that the same year that he wrapped those lyrics, his house got shot up with his mother catching a stray bullet. No, oh, my house got shot up. You dumb nigga, bro. That's a dumb nigga. Why would you, bro? God, no you way. You dropped your mom's address. That's crazy. Yeah, that's what? actually crazy. What? Nigga has a mom shot. With his mother catching a straight bullet. Nah, my house had got shot up. The nigga had spent on my house and shit like that. And my mama got hit one time. Considering how grisly the hit on Ace and his brothers nothing. were, it's no surprise that deadly retaliation was only around the corner. <laughs> On July 23rd, 2018, a reunion was taking place on Jacksonville's east side at Philip Randolph Park, hey, sweet, with around a thousand people in the area. The following Facebook video captured the moment that gunshots were fired in the crowd, causing a panic in the park. Well, appears to show a woman running from gunfire at a block party in Jacksonville. Action News Jax first broke this story last night. Police say a man was killed when dozens of rounds were fired on A. Philip Randolph Boulevard. JSO told Action News Jack's Brittany Donovan that a thousand people were at the block. What? Hold on. Come in. Nigga, I don't know if I'm tripping. I always be mm -hmm. hearing niggas knocking on my door. Chad, did y'all hear something? Mm-mm. Sound like a nigga was knocking on my door. I don't know what the fuck it is. Yo, you good, bro? 
Uh, come on. Party at that time. It turns out that the shot was no inside a man <laughs> yeah. named Lawrence Davis, aka Trey D, aka 8. He was a close friend of Fulio's who would sadly pass away later in the hospital. So has identified the 21-year-old man killed during a local reunion on the east side. Investigators said that Lawrence David was shot to death Saturday. A few weeks after this, Six Block tried to retaliate for Trey D's killing, an incident where three people were shot. Okay, this is kind of funny. So Lil Popper actually kind of funny. Right I'm not gonna lie, we need the band guns. Oh, this video got copyrighted. Lil Papa? It's kind of funny. So Lil Papa actually kind of I was about to say, what the fuck is funny? No, nah, we need the band guns. This is crazy. Are you ready? Yeah, you go video before I took it live because he'd used the audio from this news report in a song and put it on Spotify without permission. So I can't show you the news report and funnily enough this claim obviously led me to discover that it was actually him that got shot in this incident, Lil Popper. He actually talks about it in the song Purple Heart which I can't show you any of because he's copyrighted it but there you go. Wait, Lil Popper got shot? Also this month in July 2018 a young man named Corbin would go missing and he wouldn't be heard from again for an entire year. Where is Corbin Johnson? The 18 year old's parents say they dropped him off last week at a job interview and they never saw him again. Now, if you're thinking the maybe so the teenager scary. just ran away, Jacksonville police say they don't think so. Corbin's parents say they have no idea where their son is after his friends called looking for him too. His parents say their son often hung out with friends on the city's east side of town. Now, unfortunately, also as we get to the end of 2018, young Ace would unfortunately find himself back in jail again for violating his probation. But what did he do to violate it? He went to the mall without permission. Ace turned himself in, what? posting a social media clip telling his fans that by the time you see this, I'll already be in jail. I'm out of this bitch now. I ain't gonna lie. See, when I post this video, I'd be in jail right now. I already knew this shit would come to me. Y'all wanna never see a nigga win, they wanna see a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Niggas can't go to the wall? I knew this was coming. I'm not gonna lie, I couldn't leave the state. took me to jail. If you see the video, I'm already in jail. Yeah. Corbin is popping, man. Meanwhile, Julio is continuing to make music. You still ain't find that nigga? It's actually around this time mm -hmm. that he drops his. Did they ever find him? Yes, they found his well, body. Yeah, it's said a year. It said it said they didn't find him for a year. They found his body. I'm pretty sure. That's a devious album. So I said they found his bones. Yeah, they did. Bones. Yeah, they, 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 they did. They did. It was like a whole like fucking news. Uh, what's called? Yeah. Yo, what? Where was his bones at? <laughs> it was like it was, it was like in the woods, I think, or some place like that. Jesus. <laughs> Nah, Damn, officer, shit. right? That's some shit you see yeah, in the I movie. Know. That's crazy. It's they should. They did they not say it in the video. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not yet. Nah, they didn't. They didn't speak. Nah, they didn't. As well as the song Dirk story. Nah, they did him there. They probably tortured that. In 2014, where he told shot that nigga and told him to his friends and saying that Dirk was set up. In that song, Fulio also. See, look, I'm missing shit, bro. Music yeah. and pick up a buzz. It's actually around this time that he drops his six Toven project with Zaytoven, as well as the song Dirk Story, a tribute to that fallen friend of his that passed in 2014, where he told the story of them going from enemies to friends and saying that Dirk was set up. In that song, Fulio also expressed hurt he felt for the murders of his cousin Zion and Trey D. With the music video for Dirk Story being a basic but very moving montage of throwback pics of Fulio and his friends. However, Fulio would soon go from mourning death to celebrating it. As a Another significant escalation in this feud would come on the 16th of January 2019. On this day, Young and Ace would release the song Two Times Screaming, an emotional track reflecting on that night where his bros, including Two Times, were murdered. However, on that very same day, only months after being released from jail on a whopping 10 year sentence, ATK affiliate Willie Addison, aka Boss Goon, is performing at the Paradise Club in Spring Park on Bat Meadows. Oh yeah, I heard about this. He got shot on, on like the day after he got out of jail, right? Yeah, a few days after. Bro, but how? 10 years later? Like, how? Uh, was he on stage, they said, or something? He's nah, he was in the car. I mean, his brother, this is Queso's brother, so I mean, like, yeah. However, after it don't he, matter if they get him. he gets into yeah. a car and leaves the venue with his blood brother Queso, their father, and three other friends. Oh, but when that car gets to Emerson Street near Spring Park Road, another car pulls up, opening fire on the packed Chevy Tahoe, with all six people inside the car getting hit. Boss Goon unfortunately didn't make it, with his father describing on the news the grisly scene as he drove the whole car to the hospital after they were shot up. He was in the truck with five other people. His dad, Abdul Robinson, was driving. I guess two or three cars pulled up on the side of us, shot inside our car over a hundred times, killed my son in the front seat, shot my son in the back, in the, in the head three times, 
Shot my nephew several times. Couple more passengers in there were shot uh, several times, numerous of times. And I drove all the way from there to Memorial Hospital. Shot in the back myself twice. The murder of Boscoon was nearly worse than the ace hit. With six people in that car all being hit, it's actually a miracle that five of them even survived. Which is why it's doubly disrespectful that immediately after this incident, Fulio was mocking the... Wait, time out. This will be a dumb question, right? But, yo, Coke. Yeah. When you get shot, right, like that, and it's an emergency, and you run all them red lights to get to the hospital, do you still got to pay them tickets? Fuck. <sighs> Probably not. Honestly, you probably do. No, 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 no. no, no. You, you don't. That shit only, flashes. I, well, I, don't, I don't even think you can, like, if the police are chasing you. I mean, you, the you only thing the is, like, yeah, because you either pay the ticket quick, but if you don't pay it quick, you gotta go to court. So you just wait to court and be like, nigga, I was fucking so shot, nigga. Yeah, yeah, saying horrible fine, things like he deserved it. Family and friends tell me he did not deserve it. fuck, nigga, the third to die. Bitch ass. As well as showing off a pack saying that he is smoking on Willie. The American pot, that's what we gonna call him, the American pot, Willie. He ain't make it, Willie Rollo, he ain't make it. Ironically, Willie's father told the news following his son's murder that he wouldn't be seeking revenge. He wants people to know he's that's not crazy. retaliating for the murder of his okay, son. I don't want no smoke. Justice for my son. I'm not sending nobody out there. They got quote unquote, I supposed to have hits. Well, maybe he's not going for revenge, but the same couldn't be said for his other son, Queso. In the weeks that followed the murder of Boscoon, there were deadly shootouts between both of these crews. And two weeks after Boscoon's assassination, 50-year-old Damon Rothermel was shot and killed while riding his bike on Emerson Street. In case a lot of the apparently yeah. hit by a stray bullet. Heard he's out on Bondo or some shit. I'm about to say, let me get some life. This beat. Shortly after 1 p.m. Thursday, Emerson Street became a major crime scene following a deadly shooting. Witnesses say it sounded like a gun it battle between exercise. two parties in separate vehicles. By the time the gunfire ended and the shooters were long gone, a bicyclist was found in the street on the ground. Witnesses say he had been hit by gunfire. The man was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, the cops would later charge Dominic Barnard from paid. ATK with the shooting of this bystander. And remember that for later because it's important. Because Barnard... Why does ATK always get caught with the shootings, but KTA never gets locked up? Nigga, the nigga KTA is always out when they do these hits. Have you noticed that? Wasn't yeah, arrested for this crime for over a year, and over this period of time, he would allegedly continue to be a serious shooter for the ATK side. Now, naturally, all of this activity in the streets attracted the attention of the JSO Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, who sweeped up numerous KTA affiliates who had been seen in music videos toting guns in what was known as Operation Wrap Up. Six people arrested in Operation Wrap Up. Right now, police are searching for three others. This is some pictures of videos that they've had, and you can see in these pictures that these men or these teenagers actually have guns and they're pointing at the screen. Now, the sheriff says that these nine people, even though they're still looking for three, can be linked to some very serious crimes, recent crimes here in Jacksonville. However, they clearly didn't get the most motivated of shooters because allegedly in February 2019, Queso would avenge his fallen brother by taking the life of a KTA affiliate incredibly close to Fulia, killing a 16 year old boy with probably the most. Wait, how do they know it's Queso though? That's mad federal. Maybe because Queso made a song talking about the hit. It don't matter. Associated with this entire Jolina don't thing. matter. Shut up, I'm listening. Gunfire erupts inside a northwest side apartment complex. It leaves this 16-year-old dead. Neighbors say that the shooting Casey got charged for it? No way he did. I thought, it, I thought he was locked up for something else. They put that charge on him, too. Like a war zone. Sky 4 captured the large crime scene outside the Hilltop Village like apartment he can, he can complex this on 45th Street just before... It happened like... How long would it happen? Like 2017? Have identified the 16-year-old boy who was shot and killed inside the parking lot of Hilltop the apartment complex right as Andrian Gaynor Jr. Yes, Wait, sir. he was killed inside the apartment? He was like at the apartment complex. But he wasn't inside though, was he? Several hours ago, there was a large group of people that gathered here at this memorial site to pay respects to the young man who lost his life here. Uh, eyewitnesses are telling us now that Gaynor uh, was being chased to this exact spot where he lost his life. On February 25th, 2019, 
16-year-old Adrian Gaynor Jr., aka Bibby, was shot dead in a brazen attack carried out with automatic weapons at the Hilltop Village Apartments in Jacksonville. This hit was allegedly carried out by Queso. And today, he is still being held on charges of murder for this case. However, just like we said earlier that Barna wasn't charged for quite some time, Queso would remain free for over two years after the murder of Bibby. And I'll be honest, Queso pretty much spent that entire two years on a self-snitching world tour. In fact, the eventual <laughs> indictment against oh Queso for God. Bibby's murder included references to social media posts Queso had made where he appeared to mock Bibby's death and take responsibility for it. The report also says Robinson, quote, posted several photographs and videos bragging about the murder. It took two years before police issued this arrest warrant no, for Robinson. A few days after the killing, Bibby's mother marched, <laughs> vowing to get justice for her son. This evening, loved ones gathered, remember? Yeah. Remember he posted, remember on the other video he posted that shit, it said kill a nigga and then get my toes done on the same day. What? Yeah. Was 16 year old was shot and killed in the parking lot of a Northwest Jacksonville apartment complex. For the first time tonight, we're hearing from Adrian Gaynor's family who's seeking justice for his death. We pray for the mother of God, Miss Elizabeth, oh Father Lord. God As friends and relatives gathered under this gazebo to remember 16 year old Adrian Gaynor, his mom and his grandmother begged for the violence on Jacksonville streets to stop. Y'all get together and y'all pray. Gaynor's mother says she will not rest until the shooters are captured. I'm going to rock this city until they get justice for my baby. Until everybody involved are arrested, I am going to shake Duval County. A while after this, Queso ended up responding on social media, dissing Bibby and mocking his mum for calling for a march over his death. That cream had his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Poor ass dead And hey, they got his bum walk around. Oh. <laughs> March. 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 That's a damn shame. We're going to get him, March. Queso also made numerous disrespectful posts about Bibby, including making like funny little animations that I would say are kind of early flashes of the kind of crazy disrespect that we would see later on in this beef when Who I Smoke dropped. In the air with Bibby, I'm flying with Bibby, Bibby, no. I'm flying. But Queso wasn't no. the only one talking about the death of Bibby. In fact, the entire ATK side were taking disrespect to brave new levels. Whopper with the Chopper even went as far as to post a photograph of Bibby's dead body to his Instagram Whoa, story along with the say? caption, Spit on wait, this. Wait, picture wait, which is obviously what? too shocking to show you on YouTube. And I'm not actually sure if Queso- How do they have a picture of his dead body? Wait, what? The what? Fuck? Bro, no, that's what? the most bro. federal thing I've nah. ever seen in my life. Bro, bro, bro. Nah, that got it. Nah. Oh, nigga, what the fuck is going on over there? Uh, you need to sit in the National Guard to clean that whole shit up. What yeah, that's fuck? a different level, nigga. <laughs> nigga I ain't gonna bro, what the that's, fuck? That's me <laughs> on For real. The United okay, Nations needed itself. I mean, hell, they some taking it, but it just goes to show you how that's not as actual. Now, body. Fulio was particularly close to Bibby. A year after Bibby's murder, he dropped the heartfelt tribute song Bibby Story, trying to give a more positive reflection on his fallen brother. The music video had tons of throwback footage of Bibby in it. The, but on the song, song Fulio also reveals some dark details about his relationship with Bibby, saying at one point that Bibby had caught a body by the time he was 16, which is the age that he was killed. Go Going on to suggest uh, that Fulio was aware that. that the murder that Bibby had committed at this young age had been playing on his mind before he was killed. Fulio went on to say, you was killing shit for me, that's why I want to kill myself. And going on to later rap, you know I'm killing about your name because you killed for me. He say he's smoking Bibby, now he resting in peace. From these lyrics, we can kind of see that Dude, Fulio blames himself for Bibby's killing, with it sounding like Bibby was specifically targeted due to his association with Fulio. Now the song Bibby story ended up doing numbers for Fulio, but that didn't stop so taken to social media, singing along to the song to make fun of Bibby and Folio. Why you had to leave? Why you ain't stay with me? With me? Why you had to leave? Bibby. <laughs> he was 16 with a body on his belt. <laughs> Got a bad body, old 16 year old. Oh my god. Going on from this, we of course know that Bibby's name would end up being the first and most famous name that was disrespected in that song, Who I Smoke. Okay, Think why that song is fire, chat. <laughs> I didn't know who it was until now, but don't get me wrong, bro. That song was fine. So you'll sing it? I don't, I don't see. I don't ever disrespect the dead, so I don't. I don't I always. You know what I'm saying? I, I so you, would never, you would never said. You would never said smoking tuka. Mm -mm. 
Bro, you be saying that as how I do. I, I told him how it's dunk. You be saying that. No, shit I, I, I blank it out all the time. You ask my chat. You ask my chat. Especially Ooh, respect for rap. That's respect that's, that's, for. They're, 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 they're saying cap. They're saying cap. Nigga, it's not cap. Every it's time not, I hear, you say it all the time. Every time I hear <laughs> shit, they say it, you always. Every say time it. I hear shit I've done, I'd be like, um, bro, look, you be so what's saying it, do? Bro. Nah, I do. They ask me how high do I get? I told the highest. Nah, nah, that's that's. A nah, dude, I blank it out every time. I'm telling you. If, if, I, if I'm stop lying, it. if I'm lying, send me a clip. Look, look at the scripts. He said, "Definitely do." Come on. Yeah, you definitely do. Like you sing it. No, nah, I don't. Look, he said, "Oh God, he blinks it out." No cap. Look what Key Live said. The thing is, Julio wasn't lying when he said that there were people ready to kill over Bibby's name. Because only a few weeks after the Bibby hit, another attempt is made on Young and Ace's life once again with deadly consequences. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. There were, I don't know, 10 shots at least. Uh, hi. Uh, I just heard a bunch of, uh, loud echoing pops sound a lot like gunshots. But it brought me out of a sound sleep. It was several rounds running through the hall, banging on everybody's door, running outside the building, around, banging on windows. And I'm in the hotel, and I was looking out because I could hear him running. Five of them ran past our door and they were screaming, we gotta go, we gotta go before the police get here. Yes, on the 10th of March, 2019, while in Waycross, Georgia for a show, Ace and his crew are staying at the Hampton Inn Hotel. And whilst chilling outside by the pool, they are ambushed by a KTA hit squad who let off shots in an attempt to take Ace's life, which unfortunately ends up killing Ace's close friend, Rallo, real name, Jeremy Alexander Brookins. The scene of Sunday's shooting, a group of- And this of was in another city? Where was this yeah. at? Did they say? I don't know. I don't know Men, including rapper Young and Ace, were near the pool when they were shot at, according to police. Hey, this is the scene outside our hotel in Waycross. One vehicle down here, the red car. You can see where the back glass has been shot out. The chief says the two victims were with Bullard. 30-year-old Jeremy Alexander Brookins died, and 29-year-old Dwayne Lamont Scott has injuries. Both are from Jacksonville. It uh, appears so. Uh, they were all in the same general area as he was. And, they were in uh, Georgia? They all scattered when the bullets started flying. How the fuck a group of men. How the fuck they know it was KTA and not a random incident? Man, did they tell you? Lie. Nigga, there's no way that was KTA in Georgia, bro. Bro, Dude, bro, you, bro, you, you, bro you, yeah, that's what I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, but like, Ace bro, lives in Houston, that's different. Nigga, who the fuck live in Georgia? Go ask the, go ask the cops. Like, and including rapper Young and Ace were near the pool when they were shot at, according to police. Jeremy Brookings. He had a show. Waycross a police show. arresting three Jacksonville men. Mark Isaac Jefferson, Leroy Gerard Whitaker, the hotel. and Devontae DeMora Starks. Now this is a truly they, they tragic story went to his show. consider the fact that it hadn't even been an them. entire year since Ace lost those three friends in that first assassination attempt. In fact, Ace has rapped in songs where he talks about that first shooting that killed three of his friends, saying that he'd struggled to confront the mothers of his fallen brothers to explain their deaths. Now I can't begin to imagine the pain and hurt that Ace must be feeling going through this situation. So I certainly don't blame him for struggling to confront Julio the families those close to him who have lost their lives. How, long, However, how far, yo, Q, how far is Waycross? Nigga, that shit far as fuck. That shit <laughs> South Georgia. All right, man, you got nothing to do with ATL then, huh? <laughs> Got Rollo's devastated <laughs> mother, taking to the news to say that Ace and the ATK crew hadn't even sent condolences to her. Of all those boys that were there with my son when he was killed, not one of them has reached out to tell me how sorry they are. None of them has helped do anything, shown any remorse. Now she's demanding justice in the case of her son. Justice, she worries won't be coming soon. Naturally, Fulio would later take to IG Live to say that he was smoking on Rollo. Rollo! Oh, you rolled out the hundred, Lara? I rolled, I rolled out the Rollo, man. I got Rollo in this deal. Nigga rolling out the Rollo. And of course, in reference to this incident, Fulio would later end his iconic diss song, When I See You, with the terrifying lyric, Rollo died with his heat for speaking on Bibi, an apparent reference to the rumor that Rollo even had a gun on him at the time he was killed. However, the celebrations mm. from the KTA side of the beef would not last for long. And only a few months after the Rollo hit, KTA would suffer a devastating loss of their own. 
on the seventh of May. So chat, who's? I don't mean like make this like a game or nothing, but who's up right now? Cause I gonna lie. From what I'm hearing, it looks like Young and Ace lost a lot of niggas, bro. Maz, do a poll on who's up. Yo, no, 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 no. Nigga, I can't. Guys, no, it's not no L poll. I can't see the chat. Like, there's too many going back and forth. It's not. It's not a joke. Like, you know who with it, nigga? ATK, nigga. But I haven't really heard anybody from KTA die except for Bibby and like two. Are others. you stupid? Nigga, that's probably because nobody's at nothing known in fucking Woodstock. Nigga, they caught that nigga in a, in a hotel. It's crazy. Chad saying ATK is a majority. That's Julio? Nah, that's the, that's the other one. The one who, who, who um, whose friends died with the shit out of them. You ready? In Julio's interview, he was saying he was up. Bro, like they all going to say they up, bro. We don't, we don't know, bro. We don't play this really shit. <laughs> May 2019, Fulio's close friend and collaborator, 19 year old Tiki or T Shots, is shot in a tan SUV. I'm pretty sure ATK is up. 900 block of Christabel Avenue, just north of the Hilltop Village Apartments. Tiki's passing wasn't announced until nearly a month after the incident. However, if you wanted to know the news early, you would only have to go and have a look at Queso's social media, oh, where he appeared goodness. holding an assault rifle and quoting one of Tiki's lyrics. Big like on me ain't got no safety. In the months following Tiki slaying, countless disses against him made their way into ATK's music, dissing the fallen op and saying they're smoking him. Of course, Tiki was one of those names along with Bibi, who was famously disrespected on Who I Smoke. Thing is though, around this time, the ATK shooters were very active. And it wasn't just their enemies being targeted, it was the families of their enemies too. Also in May 2019, KTA shooters attempt to silence the sister of Zion Brown, with this going down on the two year anniversary of the Zion assassination. Remember at the start of this story when Zion Brown's shooter was identified as Trey Shorty by Brown's 16 year old sister who was also hit? Well, she had actually made a pretty brave post on Facebook calling out Trey Shorty as the shooter and saying that the police are refusing to help them. And well, in a hit apparently ordered from jail by Zion's killer himself, in an attempt to silence Zion's sister from speaking out publicly and testifying at trial, she was shot 14 times. Oh McFadden. my god. What? Because she was trying to snitch. Wow. Wait, 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 what? So basically, the nigga who killed her brother was uh -huh. was on trial for the murder, but uh -huh. they wasn't trying to charge him. So she, she went on Facebook and she's like, yo, the police ain't helping us out. This is the nigga who killed my brother. And the nigga sent, the, the nigga sent a hit from jail and, shot, and, and, and got his sister shot 14 times to silence her from snitching. Did he beat the case? I don't know. And says in retaliation to her son's murder two years ago, her Ooh. daughter was shot 14 times in May. Oh she God. believes her daughter was targeted. He was murdered by someone from their gang, and um, that person was sending messages from the jail threatening that if my daughter go post the trial that he would get somebody to kill her. Now the young lady fortunately survived this assassination attempt and ATKYBZ, real name Caleb Sheffield, ends up getting arrested for this shooting. But in a shock twist, only 18 days after he's arrested, charges are dropped after he provides an airtight alibi and video footage proving that he was in Orlando at the time of the shooting. What? I just thought it was somebody else. Either A, it was somebody else, or B, that nigga got to Orlando quick. 17-year-old Caleb Sheffield is set free 18 days after he was booked into Duval County Jail on four counts of attempted murder. Sources tell News for Jacks a video proof Sheffield was in Orlando at the time of the shooting. If he's not the shooter, then that means the real one is still out there. Now, just when you thought this beef couldn't get more dark, do you remember a young man by the name of Corbin who went missing about a year earlier? Well, in July 2019, Corbin is found under tragic circumstances. According to police, now his skeletal remains... Shut up, shut up, shut up. 
were found in a wooded area in northwest Jacksonville. Corbin Johnson's family reported him missing July 13th, 2018. The 18-year-old disappeared not long after a job interview. Now, one year later, his case is being investigated as a murder. Corbin Johnson was last seen alive in July of last year. Then last Friday, a man discovered the, the victim's skeletal remains in a wooded area of northwest Jacksonville off Utsi oh Road. God. Sky 4 flew over the scene as police and... What the fuck did they do to him? The fuck did they Let's do see. to him? Somebody said they burned him. They burned that nigga? Bro, so skeletal remains? Bro, yeah, that's how... just means you... Wait, what? Bro, how else do you get skeletal remains, bro? The way is like acid. Yeah. The way it's burnt, acid, acid burnt, or decomposed over time. Or, yeah, yeah, or yeah, decomposed, like, yeah. yeah, or decomposed. Your body's gonna decompose. Investigated, you can see multiple yellow How evidence marks. How him? I don't know. And a dog sniffing around yeah. the wooded area. DNA. Now, the loss of Corbin DNA is my son, uh, 18K dental. members rep S4C, or Spaz for Corbin, and Fulio would later speak on what happened to Corbin in a pretty disrespectful tone, saying what happened to Corbin is his worst fear. This is my worst fear, bro. If you go on news for Jack, bro, the nigga Corbin real deal got kidnapped. Like, I know he got adopted. Do you know how much sis that make? Because when you grown, you get adopted. You don't get kidnapped. Like, type shit. That man got adopted. Real shit. Like, that's my worst feel. A nigga kidnapping me. I swear to God, bro. Like, I swear to God, on the news, it said that man Bones got found. Like, that man Bones got found. Just Bones. I swear to God. They said a nigga was mowing the line. And ran over that man bones. I swear to God, I ain't making this shit up. No cap. You gonna lose the right now. Nigga was more in the line to find that man bones. I swear to God, no cap. Why be down for nigga kidnap me? But I'm finna kick, scream, holler, bite your ass, pinch your ass, finna do whatever, man. Nigga ain't kidnapping me, bro. That nigga Corbin got kidnapped. Real boy, ain't none of my niggas getting kidnapped, bro. Real shit, bro. Now, with that kind of energy, it was Corbin on his squad? No, no, no. That's his art. No, no. Respect incoming from the other side. And in September 2019, Queso would make the news. But this time, not for a grisly crime, but instead getting inducted into the self snitching Hall of Fame by attempting to release a music project with this cover. Yes, Queso took to Instagram to announce the pending release no, of the new project called Bibi Ow that came along with a front cover that depicts Queso and ATKYBZ quite literally smoking the dead ops. With these people all being pictured and named as Dirk, Vontae, Zion Brown, Bibby, and Trey D, all close friends of Fulios who have lost their lives. But really, it's Bibby who is the centerpiece, and let's not forget people, Queso is literally sat in jail right now, charged with the murder of Bibby. I gotta say, this is probably the first time in rap history that the front cover of a project has been so disrespectful it has literally made the news. Because this cover caused an enormous uproar in the Jacksonville community. And I'll be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if this front cover itself, quite literally, didn't play a significant role in the investigation against Queso for Bibby's murder. The controversial rap album cover is making its way around social media. The cover shows pictures of men who have been murdered in Jacksonville. Local rapper Queso posted the picture to Instagram. The caption on the post says, y'all DM ATKYBZ and tell him to drop dead and I'ma drop it tonight. This album cover, a local rapper named Queso posted on Instagram Monday, is frustrating for parents like Benetta McFadden. Her son, Zion Brown, is on the cover. She says he and some of the other men in the picture were murdered. It hurts my heart, like, to see my son on there as a joke. Brown's mother is outraged. She feels like the local rappers are glorifying these murders by putting the victims' faces on the album cover. It's unclear if the rappers are directly linked to these murders. Now, in response to the uproar in the community over this cover, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office begun to look much harder at Queso and the people around him. And eventually, this extra attention would lead to some arrests, but not for quite some time. And so, the violence in the street would continue, as did the disrespect for the ops on social media. And even with all the added attention, of the authorities and literally being on the news from this album cover, Queso didn't think for a second to switch up and act smarter. No, in October, Queso would use the news clip about his incredibly incriminating front cover as an intro for the music video of his new song, Queso Bitch. Yet another masterclass in self snitching. <laughs> Queso rapped countless yeah, times that demon. he was smoking Dirk and Bibby, as well as saying Bibby had a closed casket, I'm not surprised, and suggesting that he had shot at YNR Mookie with a Draco. Now, YNR Mookie actually clapped back on the song Gangster Talk, dropping the lyric, pulled up on him 
moment, the red light went to ripping in this shit. A line which had a lot of people suggesting that maybe he had something to do with that shooting that left three of Ace's friends deceased. Anywho, meanwhile maybe. in November 2019, at least Young and Ace is staying focused on the music. Releasing dope projects like Step Harder, leaving the street business to Queso. However, with all of that extra attention Queso was attracting in the streets with his criminal activities, or on the news with his disrespectful music, and well, it wouldn't take long for Karma to catch up with him and his family, provoking a serious response. <laughs> On December the 11th, 2019, the Ops knock on Queso's door. And when his mother calls out, who is it, from the upstairs window, whoever was knocking gets to pop in, firing shots at the property, with this supposedly leaked police report suggesting that around 27 shots were fired at the property before the suspects fled in a stolen SUV. With Queso's yeah. mom apparently telling cops that she believed Julio or his associates were involved, and the cops later arresting numerous people associated with Six Block. Fulio reacted to the news later on in an IG Live, He's saying that Queso got got humbled by his mother being shot at. His mama just got shot at and shit, so that's why he ain't been talking crazy no more. He ain't yeah. tell y'all about that. He ain't gonna post that his mama just got shot at. So now your daddy got shot and your mama got shot at. And your brother died in front of him. Fuck him. And well, clearly not one to allow any kind of disrespect on his name, within a month, Queso was back on the scene, retaliating. Initially with music, releasing the track Bang It Out on January the 5th, 2020, where he dissed five or six dead ops, including Bibby showing the Vancouver Grizzlies Bibby jersey that seems to have become iconic in this beef, oh as well as dissing goodness. Julio's other fallen friends, Kendre and Dirk from that album cover, and dissing several other KTA affiliated rappers like Y&R Mookie, Slugger, and Cho, with Folio clapping back and dissing Ace and Queso on his response song In The Air that dropped a few days later. On that, Folio said that Queso's dad is a snitch, he drops lyrics that refer to shootings at intersections, and saying that he's smoking two of the three people that passed away in that car with Ace. Well, less than a week after that, it would appear that Queso and the ATK guys were getting busy. Because on January the 15th, 2020, just one day shy of the year anniversary of the killing of Boss Goon, Queso's brother, it's alleged that KTA member and close friend of Fulio Charles McCormick, aka Lil Buck, was tailed by Queso and other people, including Dominique Barner. Remember, this Man, is this the guy- Queso nigga was a demon. An innocent bystander off a bicycle during that shootout between two cars. So these ATK guys mm. are still doing murders. Little buck from Wait, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so he got off on the first murder and now he's on the second. This is the only. Got bail still murdering niggas. To a shopping center on Merrill Road. And when Lil Buck came out of the store around 11 a.m., it's alleged that Queso jumped out of the car and shot him dead using an assault rifle. However, in a shocking twist, this hit was witnessed directly by an off-duty police officer who jumped in a car and took chase following the culprit several blocks. And to make matters wow. worse, the shooters, after fleeing authorities, escaped the scene but then crashed the getaway car. The two suspects Damn, were then caught on surveillance video jumping through people's yards. And at this at this point, it's alleged that Queso and Barna broke into a woman's home, holding her hostage whilst they changed clothes and then made Damn, so they almost got away with wild it. Crime spree they fucked the up the car. Manhunt. Right now at 10, the hunt is on for two men pretty. who shot and killed another man in Arlington before leading police on a chase and breaking into a woman's home, holding her hostage. At around 11 a.m. Wednesday, this shopping plaza off Merrill Road quickly became a major crime scene. I heard six gunshots. Those gunshots killed a man in his mid-20s who was standing outside the front door of this employment agency. Police say two men in a gray car pulled up and began shooting him. Some of the shots went through the window of the agency. A surveillance camera from another neighbor's house records the suspects running through backyards and hopping over a then fence to avoid cameras. capture. Moments later, police say the men forced their way into this home and held the homeowner hostage while they changed their clothes. The men eventually left and were last seen getting into a red or orange car believed to either be a Dodge Challenger or Charger. Now, here's something that a lot of people get fucked up about this story. Once Queso and Barna change clothes and leave that property, they're allegedly picked up by a vehicle that is being driven by Queso's father. And it's at this point that he becomes an accessory to murder. However, there's a few people that have falsely yeah, suggested that Queso's dad yeah. actually had something to do with the hit. That's not the case. But anywho, if Queso thought that he got away from this drilling scot-free, then he was wrong. Because a handgun was found in that crashed getaway car, which the police say they found they left finger. A gun in the car? Had fingerprints on it too. What's wrong with y'all? Oh, they, they probably were just in adrenaline. You probably didn't even think about shit like that. But to make matters worse, 
following the ain't got no gloves, they ain't got nothing. to social media and apparently posted a clip of Lil Buck rapping along with a waving hand emoji and the caption bye bye. As well as another post of him supposedly showing himself getting a pedicure and an even more incriminating caption basically saying kill a man then get my toes done. Now I looked for these social media posts pretty far and wide but it this seems like they've now been taken down pretty comprehensively. But in the weeks that followed Lil Buck's murder there was a wave of shootings in Jacksonville including a 24 hour span in late February where six people were shot in five different shootings, leaving one dead and the community calling for a ceasefire. Friday, the city had three shootings within hours. One was in Durkeyville, another was off Gate Parkway, and another near 20th Street in Talleyrand. In a seven-day time frame from now until March 1st, the Northside Coalition is pushing its ceasefire campaign. The group wants people to resolve conflict and stay away from altercation. Well, I can tell you this was not fair. And on March the 19th, 2020, we would see one of the most senseless killings in this entire beat. Yeah, that's the on this evening, pandemic. an attempt is made on KTA affiliate Kay Shorty's life in a shooting near Portsmouth Avenue and Norfolk Boulevard. He'd yeah. been on a date with 17-year-old high school student Iambi White when a grey car pulled up in front of them with two men hopping out and opening fire with the an AK-47. Kay Shorty survived, oh but the innocent young lady did not. According to oh her family, she was dropping off Push. a male friend after the two went on a date March 19th. Bro, you know what? You know what gets me? You know what gets me mad? It's when the innocent people pass. Yeah, the bystanders. Bro. Yeah, bro, the bystanders, bro. R.I.P. Chat. Hey, you get your shorty Dang. killed, bro. bro. She's 17 too, bro. Family told me by phone she dropped the young man off at Portsmouth near Norfolk when two men in a gray car jumped out and began shooting into her car. Kay Shorty posted a picture of the woman with a caption saying that the beef is now personal. However, two suspects were eventually arrested for this murder, Roland Ball and Xavion Porter. Almost a year went by after the death of 17-year-old Inandi Weish. Finally, her family has the answers they've been looking for. Police arresting 21-year-old Roland Ball Jr. for murder and a 16-year-old for conspiracy charges. Now, I wish I could say that Miss White was the only female to have caught astray in this feud, but a few months after no this way. Fulio's girlfriend also got caught in the crossfire in an incident where the ops apparently shot up Fulio's car saying? and she caught a bullet in the hand. Your girl got shot? Mm -hmm. My right? car got shot up. Your car got shot and your girl yeah. was in the car, right? Yeah, I wasn't in the car. She was driving the car. Did she, did she get hit? Yeah, but she good though. Y'all thought I was dead. Yeah, bitch. You ain't up score just yet. Fuck niggas. Mm -hmm. Not a joke. As the war not a joke. Of what he am I watching? Yeah. As, no, as 2020 goes on, more and more disrespectful songs are being dropped on both sides. In March, Queso and Jay the Youngin dropped the disrespectful visuals for the song Step on Some, which opens with them setting fire to an. I know EXO jersey. loved that song. Meanwhile, Young and Ace. But here's my it's thing though. What did the, the Jada Youngin connection come from? Because Jada Young is from Louisiana. Jada Youngin, Young Jada Young is always was cool with Ace, Young and Ace. And like, but ain't he from Louisiana? Like, together. Huh? Yeah, I think I don't right. ever hear about his beef in Louisiana. I always hear about his beef in Florida. Where's his beef in Louisiana? Bro, did you? Nigga, he's not a, a nigga. Don't boy. got no ops. So he has no ops. He's beef with young boy. <clears throat> bro, come on, man. That don't count, bro. Bro, you heard, you heard thirty-eight. That bro, beef bro. wasn't there from the jump, bro. Like you know what I mean. All his ops is dead. Bro, he probably got beef that nigga. Ain't nobody left a beef. Nigga said, nigga said, nigga said Louisiana don't claim this nigga. Jada Young is just a dick rider. This is popping up on the King Von yeah, Bang and Trust Issues, mm -hmm. with Queso all up in the video sitting next to King Von. Shit, the only couch I've seen with more bodies on it is this one. On April the 3rd, 20... <laughs> Yo, that was dick Holy suck. Holy God. God. That was dick, dick suck. suck. No, he got it, bro. Oh, that was dick he suck. Meanwhile, Young and Ace is popping up on the King Von <laughs> Banger Trust Issues, with Queso all up in the video sitting next to King Von. Shit, the only couch I've seen with more bodies on it is this one. On April the 3rd, 2020, Spinner Benz drops his song, Active, and in Push this video, he's wearing a wrestling... Jayden. Y'all saw the big W's in the chat. Big 50 gifted, man. Queso and Vaughn were supposed to drop a song together? Really? That shit probably was ass. <laughs> What's the title? Murder? <laughs> that was federal. And that's yeah, all I know that song is dog shit. Yeah, I was the question. <laughs> that song definitely probably is going to be fucking I just trash, can't understand why these niggas so fucking hot boy. Nigga, them niggas was fucking... Oh, they know. Like, this is nigga. mad hot boy, nigga. 
You can't do nah, this shit out here. it's hot. It is hot, though. I ain't gonna lie. All right, all right, let me see. Julio shirt with a picture of an X'd out Julio on it. The song also included one particularly savage lyric where he suggested that Julio's mother is part of the war, a reference to the 2018 shooting at her home. And of course, there are the expected usual. Someone in the chat said they actually have one. I thought they said it was supposed to have one. They actually got one? Please don't play it. Nigga, I, wanna, I ain't gonna lie. I wanna hear that shit, bro. I ain't gonna bro, Queso is one, might be the worst rapper I ever heard. He sucked? <laughs> That did nigga sucked. Him, did you not hear him in the booth like 30 minutes ago? Yo, Exodus, he suck? Yes, that nigga fucking sucked, nigga. <laughs> Bro, he was on this video BB 30 minutes ago in the booth. The day after that drops on April the 4th, YNR Slugger T and YNR Mookie drop the song Murder Twins, which feature more lyrics that seem to hint towards the YNR crew having something to do with that three person deadly shooting. Then on April 16th, Fulio dropped something unexpected the tribute song Kendra Alston. In that track, surprisingly, Fulio says, We got the same dream, I could never hate on Young and Ace. Now, I've got to say, guys, this might be the nicest thing Fulio has ever said. You know, there's a little delusional part of me. But wishes this could have just been the first step in those two fixing their beef. Wait, you know, so maybe where did Y and R come from? I'm so lost. Together, found some common Nigga, they're clicked up with ATK because they got beef with. I mean, they're clicked up with KT because they're beefing with ATK niggas. Dropped the disrespectful banger We the Ops. This included disses aimed at Bibby, Trey D, Fulio, and Tiki. They say Fulio got beat up in jail. They diss his mum for getting shot, as well as some lyrics that seem to take responsibility for the shooting of Trey D at the reunion. Now that song had a whole bunch of tough talking, which makes it even more crazy. But only one day after this track was released, we would see the deadly shooting of another KTA affiliate. Oh because on Sunday, 2.30 p.m. on May the 3rd, 2020, 18-year-old Antoine D'Angelos Williams, aka Lil PD, aka 35, is targeted in a drive-by shooting where 50 shots were fired at 4 <laughs> Bro, they dumped 50. Bro, these niggas must have rounds for days, bro. Do you know what 50 shots is? That's bro. a lot. Bro, yeah, there's, just, bro, bro, there's no not, way, oh, there's no way nigga, them niggas didn't reload. There's Draco, no way they didn't reload. Draco. Nigga, they had to reload. Nah. I mean, it, I mean, if it's like three niggas, they all got Draco. What type of guns they got out there in Florida? If that's an AR. Regular ARs come with 30. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Probably three that's niggas with Draco. Dab, probably three niggas with Draco. These niggas got heavy odds. Damn, this is what I'm saying. They had to have reloaded. No, it's three niggas with Draco. Bro, 50, yeah, bro, probably, nah, yeah, it's bro, 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 50 it's shots three is like five minutes, bro. That's like five no, minutes. Not. No, you can dump 50, bro. You can dump 50 in 30 seconds. People from a white Kia sedan. Bro, you got to understand it's not just one Shell person. Shell casings and markers it. cover the 2100 block of Brooklyn Road. JSO says a suspect fired about 50 shots around 2.30 Sunday afternoon. Four men were shot. One of them has life-threatening injuries. Police say they believe the suspect in the shooting was in a white Kia sedan and was seen leaving the scene traveling east. Spinner Benz and Whopper would go on to diss Lil PD, aka 3-5, in numerous songs from here on out, but the losses for the KTA side were far from over, because around a month later, we would see another famous name from Jesus. this beat lose their life in a shocking broad daylight attack. On the 9th of June, 2020, Lil Nine, real name Dimitri Mixon, was the passenger in a car traveling east on Atlantic Boulevard, when another car pulled up alongside and fired 12 shots from a rifle into the passenger door of that car. The shooting car fled the scene whilst the car that Lil Nine was in crashed into a rim shot, creating oh a shocking God. broad daylight scene which naturally made the news. Right now at 10, police are searching for a gunman after a passenger oh in a car saw, was dude. shot and killed along a busy stretch of Atlantic Boulevard in broad daylight. Sky 4 giving you a bird's eye view. The shooting sent people in nearby buildings ducking for cover. Just like bop, 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 bop. And this is surveillance video of the crash That's following that shooting in Arlington. We've highlighted the black car scene slowly driving down the street. Damn. The car police are now looking for in connection with this shooting. This store where police say the car carrying the gunshot victim crashed into the glass wall in the front. And get this, police say based on the shells that they recovered from the scene, the murder weapon appears to be a rifle. The area where the yep, black car Draco. slows down is also the same area where police collected multiple rifle shell casings in the street, leading investigators to believe the shots were fired from the black car. But to make things even more dramatic, the shocking scene was captured not just by the news, but there was also direct footage recorded from the scene by the surviving driver of that car, which was immediately uploaded to social media. Now that footage was captured by the what scene the fuck? to social media, I assume in a moment of grief-driven mania. And it's unfortunate that it was. 
Bro, how do these niggas be catching each other just randomly in traffic, bro? Bro, bro they're getting, they're getting that's followed, all they doing bro. every day? They're getting, bro, they're getting followed, annoyed. They're getting followed. They're getting a drop, man. Exactly. Cool. Like. It didn't take long for the opposition to take that footage and start making fun. Queso reposted that clip with the added caption, Pussy Boys Wanna Cry Now. And after that, in August, Queso goes on to drop his song, Been Dead. Starting off with a music video where they use VFX to put Lil Nine in the blunt that Queso pulls out of the microwave and smokes. Yo, I only just realized after exactly. recording this, this reference was actually a response to an earlier diss in a music video by Y&R Mookie, where he puts a blunt in the microwave and puts the setting on the timer to 2-3. You know what that's all about. On that song, Queso oh. also rapped, You Should Have Killed Me at Waycross, it's a, a reference to that hotel assassination on Ace in Georgia, confirming mm. that Queso was there. However, despite the ops piling dirt on Lil Nine's name, Fulio wasn't bothered, saying that he gets hurt over Bibby, but not Lil Nine, even reacting to the crime scene footage himself. Uh, nigga can't diss Bibby because nigga real deal. <laughs> Bibby was like that. I ain't gonna diss Lil Nine. I ain't say fuck Lil Nine. I ain't say none of that because I ain't even... He dissing on Bibby. I ain't even say fuck now. I said, yo, goof ass report that man dead. What I said was, yo, goof. L mans. L mans. Niggas cut your home and you was like, oh, yeah, I mean, he was cool. He's all right, he was, but not this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, he was all right, but he wasn't an outstanding member like Bibby was. Like, L mans. Goof ass report that man dead. Like, Mods, are we in sub only? I could take it off sub only. Like this, like your goof ass did this goof. Hey, live, is this, hey, this some real shit right here. Like, I need y'all answer. He told me, get up, wake up. <laughs> Fulio went on to diss the driver of that car, Iron Rap, for recording Lil Nine dying, saying that he needs to make up for that. You nigga played. He kept saying, you nigga played. Nigga, you the one who played. Yo, goof ass, the one who played, recording that man. I know his mom and them hate your goof ass. I know that man, mom and them hate your goof ass for doing it. You put that man dead body on. I know they hate your goof ass. They Lil Nine birthday, man. The nigga I don't rock gotta prove something, man. It's LeBron's birthday or some shit today, man. You record that man dead, man. That man ain't happy right now. He ain't happy, bro. Nah, ain't happy right now, LeBron. You make that shit look bad. The day I record my brother dead on the ground before I pick up a gun, I got all my brother the right to kill, brother the right to kill me. Kill me. Like, I want what you put, what you posted that on his store for followers or something? Like, what, what is, what would you getting out of that? Like, that is man, like, what the fuck would you want it? Some lights or some shit, some sympathy? Of course, we all know now that Lil Nine's name famously made it into that chorus of Who I Smoke, along with Bibi and Techie. And funnily enough, following that song's release, Young and Ace would end up being on Instagram live in a diner when he gets confronted by Lil Nine's cousin, telling him that he's a dead man and saying that Lil Nine got wasted like real life GTA. Yo ass though, you dead. Now, Lil Nine, oh, that is your cousin. Nigga, fuck your cousin, man. Fuck that dead ass. Fuck that dead ass. Nigga. This is the your dab. What the fuck? Dab, dab. Keep in mind. Little nice cousin person. No, no, no. But his cousin, his cousin is ATK. What? His cousin is ATK. So, oh, so basically, he's a part of the gang that killed his own cousin. That's crazy. What? Yeah. Crazy. Wow. Now oh, that got it right there. Okay. You dead. Now, Lil Nine, oh, that is your cousin. Nigga, fuck your cousin, man. Fuck that dead ass, nigga. Fuck that dead ass, nigga. I'm smoking this dead ass, nigga. I smoke, shit, nigga. I smoke more to them. I'm smoking Lil Nine dead ass. Fuck your cousin, nigga. Fuck your cousin, nigga. I'm smoking too. I'm smoking that dead ass, nigga. That nigga been dead. That nigga died. He thought this was GTA real life. Wasted his crazy ass. Niggas be beefing with family. Yeah. After the little nine kids, the shooters were working too. overtime. And after surviving Said it to his face, though. Life, that's crazy. Jackson, yeah, he don't fuck with his cousin he either. Said he just said he's yeah, smoking it more than anyone. He said he's smoking his cousin, too. Yeah, he, he said, said I smoke his... it more than anyone. He said, he said, that strain is his, is his favorite because it's his cousin. Yeah, he said that. What? Uh, that's he said, crazy, oh, yeah, man. he said, because this strain is my favorite because it's family or whatever. Or you with blood. That's what he said. What? That shit is beyond me. Oh he said, that's my, that was my favorite because it was blood. That family reunion must be crazy. Nigga, I don't know. Siggy, for 27 months. ...in Waycross, Georgia. I'm going to the barbecue. Fulio to an experience and attempt on his life out of town. 
app because on the 6th of July, 2020, Julio was in Houston, Texas doing some business. And whilst he was there, he posted a clip to social media of him outside on a block filming a music video. Oh yeah, we're, we're in the middle of Texas. Yeah. Yeah, bro, what you say, gang? I actually know the music. In the middle of the month. Yeah, man. Oh, it's Texas. Because I'm looking for tweet. Now, Fulio may have slipped up by posting these pics because after leaving the shoot, his car was shot up with a bullet supposedly grazing his skull. But Fulio fortunately survived, even going live at the hospital. Good uh, nigga shot me, but didn't kill me. I'm Kendra. <laughs> you fucking stupid. <laughs> When Fulio got out of the hospital, he even posted a clip of the damage that was done to his truck, but he was still driving and trying to guess what kinds of guns and bullets they'd used. I ain't shit. I'm still part of that guy. Again. I thought I told you I'm a star in the same car and all. Fuck. That nigga shooting his last fucking. I bet this was a Sky 9 or a Taurus 9 or some shit. What the fuck? Last fucking bullet. Who the fuck y'all was trying to kill? Julio would later downplay the shooting, describing his injuries simply as a graze to the neck. I had that graze in the back of my neck though. It wasn't you know, it wasn't no bitch shit though. Maybe they had no aim or whatnot. I don't know. I don't know. But following the shooting, Fulio's ops were clowning his brush with death. Queso was joking on Fulio, posting the following clip to his social media. Into this cap and they stepping for real. A few moments later. Good uh, nigga shot me, but didn't kill me. Casey went on to repost the clip of Fulio That's dick once suck. again, with a caption this saying Fulio like just won't die, and that his grandma must really do voodoo, a reference to a lyric in his hit song Voodoo. And Young and Ace was also later seen mocking the attempt on Fulio's life too. Y'all need not like that, bro, because you ain't say that shit when nigga ain't that shiny motherfucking dick. Nigga won't be talking about that shit. Nigga almost died. These disses against Fulio soon made their way to music, as only a few days after the incident, on July the 10th, 2020, Spinner Benz dropped the KU music video, which featured him smoking a weed pack with Fulio's picture on it, and ending the video by screaming 6K or 6 killers, while showing off their impeccable arms collection. But if that wasn't enough indirect self How can you smoke it on nigga? You're not even dead. This one that went right over Yeah, word. Because if you go back and listen to the lyrics of Who I Smoke closely, You'll hear Fast Money Goon basically confess his involvement in Fulio shooting, opening the final verse of the song nah, saying, crazy. I took the rocket when I travel, I'm pistol packing in Houston. I was lurking on his page, I caught him lacking in Houston. We let off shots, he got shot and went live. I was tweaking like, fuck man, that bitch ain't die. I'm gonna <laughs> no, have to get that is That nigga's in Hall of Fame self-snitching nigga too. No, I remember when I first heard that shit, I was, I was in disbelief. Sort of self-snitching lifetime <laughs> achievement award at this rate. Anyway, the following <laughs> month, this beef ended up descending <laughs> into pretty childish terror as it was around August 2020 that KTA affiliate Kojak was seen pulling up to the ATK hood of Melvin Park on social media. You know, that's how we do. Nigga <laughs> <They can> know. Nigga <laughs> know who we at. Nigga hanging out too good, man. Let's see. <laughs> Apparently, Queso had said that he would be there to fight Kojak at 4 p.m., but never showed. Fulio also said that they had planned to meet, but Queso turned up an hour and a half late at 5.30, with Queso only being seen spinning the block a while after Kojak had left. Hey, maniac beats. I have not seen no motherfucking Kojak. Hey. Queso replied saying KTA just came and took a pic and then dipped, telling them to come back. Good picture and live. Took a good picture and leave. <laughs> Nigga, scary as hell, man. Come back. Right now, come back. Playing six, nine games, man. We ain't on that shit, man. That link up. I won't even be playing no six, nine games. Kojak said that he didn't leave after the pick and even posted a picture of him next to the Melvin Park sign at 4.07. And then Kojak responded saying Queso has security like 6 9 at his music video shoots. Security and escorted with security and shit like, what the fuck? Tell me, I'm on that 6 9 shit, you niggas be on that shit for real, man. Niggas go to their hood and make a video, you got security with you the whole time. Like, what type of police shit you mean? You don't want to keep saying nigga name, songs, all that shit, man. With Fulio and Kojak jumping onto live for a post op block debrief, with Fulio giving Kojak a little lecture on timekeeping. That nice ass uh, part. Nice ass uh, fucking part. Bitch, I got on the swings. 
fuck you talking about? You lucky or wet out there on the fucking slide. Boy, your ass had me laughing so hard. And then you told the nigga to pull up, and the nigga still pulled up to that bitch on time. Nigga pulled up, nigga ain't say shit. And you said you four o'clock, like fuck, nigga. That means you were supposed to, you said be there at four o'clock, fuck, nigga. You were supposed to be there at 345, bitch ass, nigga. Bitch, I was there at 345. That's what I'm trying to tell you on everything I love. After the attempt on Fulio's life, while the quite literal playground standoff between Queso and Kojak kind of lowered the tone of this beef, in September, the KTA team were back on grown man business and looking to take the life of one of their enemies. And on the 2nd of September, they would catch one lacking with fatal consequences. At around 1.30 a.m., officers preparing to change shift at the nearby Regency Mall police substation heard gunshots in the distance. They traveled to the scene and found a car riddled with bullets at the intersection of Atlantic Boulevard and Monument. Road. The driver of that car was ATK affiliate Lil Leaky, or Lil Leak. He was found in the vehicle suffering life threatening injuries and would later pass away. Officers actually pursued a right, second car that they saw fleeing the scene, eventually pulling it over around four miles away at the intersection of Beach Boulevard and Cortez Road. Someone in that second car was also suffering a gunshot wound and taken to the hospital with officers believing that another person was injured and fled the scene. He news alert from the Arlington area two lanes of Beach Boulevard remain blocked at St. John's Bluff. There's been a double shooting and two crime scenes. Police found one of the people who was shot near that intersection. This investigation spans several miles. In fact, it started when officers at a substation in Regency heard gunshots and then found a person shot right outside basically that substation at Atlantic Boulevard near Monument Road. It's riddled with bullets. We counted no, five so bullet holes in both sides station. of the vehicle. Officers say they found Why the driver with gunshot wounds in life-threatening condition. JSO says this person has been taken to the hospital and is not expected to survive. At the same time, officers saw another car speeding away. Police stopped the car on Beach Boulevard and found a second person who had been shot. That person was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police say the four other people inside the car are now in custody and investigators are questioning them. Following Lil Leaky's pass, Spinner Benz posted a tribute on Instagram, with Whopper with a chopper going on to make a slightly more gangster social media post, saying the ops don't post about their dead homies because they know they're getting smacked. Meanwhile, Fulio leans into disrespecting Lil Leaky, posting a clip of him smoking a pack. Come on, man. You know I keep that leaky, man. I've been, boy, this dead ass nigga, boy. Yes, nigga. Meanwhile, Fulio posts himself smoking a pack. That was followed by another post, which interestingly had a background song, the track When I See You by Fantasia, the song that Fulio would later remix to diss the other side, along with a picture of Leaky and a caption saying new pack and asking why the ops are quiet today. Followed by another post saying Ace must be sick to his stomach right now. But almost as if he wasn't quite sure if he was getting into hell yet, Fulio doubled down on the disrespect, popping up on IG Live to ask once again, why are the ops so quiet? The ops ain't talking today, man. The ops, these niggas usually be happy on Facebook, joking, Facebook comedians. They sliding. Yeah, they nothing today, man. That shit crazy. Yeah, man, these niggas sad today, man. But you know I'm smoking. You know I'm smoking a little leaky. Got that little leak, that new, that new pipe. Niggas ain't tweeting. Niggas ain't saying nothing. Them niggas home, but not even. I'm talking about these usually be the niggas that's on Facebook making 12 statuses a day like this. Boy, they make a whisper today. Man, dead. I'm in sleepwalking right now. This gonna be your reality right here. You see this blunt? Look. It'll be fire your ass up. You would just this and look. I look for all they taste good too. They already crying and sad right now. These fought they good for the meat. At the wow. funeral, Alessa, play right wave, pain. Hell, it would turn out that Fulio was so that happy was over this thrilling, he went on a goddamn field trip to a weed dispensary to get custom leaky packs printed. Get all the plugs. This, man, nigga, we got any flavor, nigga. Any dead art, nigga. Stop fucking playing on my top, man. Put this nigga ass on the screen. Leaky packs. A exclusive leaky packs on the way, man. Real gas. This ain't that fake ass. That nigga's coming here by turtlenecks. If you claim you a weed smoker, this go for anybody. I'm gonna need y'all to get these leaky p mm. Fuck this niggas real so off, man. You know bro. what I'm saying? Real <laughs> dead. <laughs> back when the dead is that came back to life, man. <laughs> this real off. This ain't no fake ass Zod uh, need the fuck you talking about. That little fake shit you niggas had in the past and shit. This a real exclusive dead nigga who woke his ass. That's crazy. Ever since the hit on Lil Buck, 
Queso's days were numbered. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office wanted Queso and his dad in cuffs nearly as much as the ops wanted them dead. However, in the days leading up to his capture, Queso would go back and forth with the ops on music. On September the 3rd, 2020, Fulio disses the other side Mod's of his song, Fast Life, where he says, killed my dog, killed three of y'all, so that means we over-equal, which I assume is a reference to the Zion Brown hit, followed by the three-person car shooting. He also says that his fallen friends Trey D and Tiki are on his mind, which gives him a bad temper, and says if you diss on Bibby's name, you're gonna die, simple, as well as saying that he's smoking on Queso's brother, Willie. And the day after that song dropped, on the 4th of September 2020, Queso dropped the response song, a track called Back to Back. Now, this song was pretty bold. In the chorus, Queso says, back to back we drill in, back to back we kill him, something which if these allegations are true, we know he was literally doing. Elsewhere in the song, he says, we're the ones who drop your man, buried your partner, he says he'll let the Draco dance and watch you do the Bibby dance. He says, let me tell you a story of how we caught him and ripped off. I hit the corner and tore his ass up. I heard they killed the dog. He says, I aim for his head so I know for sure he dead. I mean, considering the fact that Queso is literally currently accused of killing Bibby, the release of the song back to back is incredibly bold, if completely idiotic. And naturally, all of that self-snitching really didn't do Queso any favors. Because exactly one week after that song released, both Queso and his father are taken into custody by the police. Develop Shockery. Now, a father and yeah. son have been arrested in connection with a that. deadly shooting at an Arlington shopping center. 21-year-old Hakeem Robinson and his father, 49-year-old Abdul Robinson, are both in the Duval County his jail. Dad snitched on him. Hakeem Robinson is no, charged with second-degree yeah, murder, and Abdul is charged with accessory after the fact. Now, the next thing I'm about to say is pretty important because there's a few videos floating around YouTube at the moment that are getting these details dead wrong. So the cops got a big break in the case against Kesu, where they found a snitch, aka a confidential informant, who gave the police key details on the case and Queso's role within it. Now, remember Dominique Barner, who was accused of being on the Lil Buck hit with Queso? Well, he gets arrested in February 2020 for home invasion. He later gets charged for second degree murder for his role in the killing of Lil Buck, and he is then subsequently charged with murder for the killing of Damon Rothermel, who was shot off his bike by a stray bullet in the shootout between ATA. Wait, so he got charged again? Because wasn't he already charged before? He was charged in for home invasion, the killing of the strength of like the bystander and Lil Buck. So Barner is sitting in jail through most of 2020 with Queso and his dad getting arrested in September. Problem is, a lot of people have incorrectly labeled Dominique Barner as the snitch or confidential informant. And it probably has something to do with this very badly worded report on the news breaking down the case against Queso. So many aspects of this, Mary, have been going through all day and starting to piece things together. You have a variety of suspects, a variety of victims, different links for different cases cases, but you start to see that web you described described between all these homicides. And I want to talk to you about one thing that happened here. Police were able to make their case against Robinson because of a confidential informant. Now, if I was this news reporter, I would be very scared. In fact, this guy's lucky he hasn't already caught a strap because he points at a picture of Dominique Barner's face when he says confidential informant. This yeah, is Kyle, that's real confidential. Because as a result, a lot of people on the internet think Dominique Barner is the confidential informant as a result. But he wasn't. That is not correct. And just in case this news reporter doesn't know it, naming somebody in the streets as a snitch who is not can be deadly for them mm -hmm. and for you. But if you mm -hmm. read between the lines, you will actually understand that another person, an unnamed confidential informant, i.e. snitch, whose identity is confidential so we don't know who it is, don't be pointing at somebody's face when you say confidential informant, unless it's fine. So this anonymous snitch who we don't know basically wore a wire and recorded a conversation Wait, did he with just Dominique admit he's Barner. A fan? Now this was likely a yeah. conversation in contact <laughs> with Barner had no idea that. that he was being recorded. <laughs> and in this call that he was having in confidence, Barner revealed details about the murder that were recorded on this wire. Barner admitted that they had followed Lil Buck to the shopping center from his home, and Barner was later forced to acknowledge his involvement in the incident in the face of the irrefutable evidence that had been recorded against him. With the feds suggesting that Barner admitted that Queso wanted to kill Lil Buck for dissing Boscoon on a song. But for the record, it's not entirely clear which details were recorded on the wire tap and which were confessed to the police after the evidence was presented. We don't know. That guy on the news certainly doesn't know. So just keep that in mind. 
So what we do know is that an unnamed snitch, confidential informant, was able to get the Fed's details on Dominique Barna's involvement, Queso's involvement, and Queso's dad's involvement. Frankly, this isn't a great look for the long-term possibility of Queso being free. And after his arrest, he was seen in jailhouse attire and a face mask looking pretty defeated. In fact, after Queso's arrest, the cops take an even closer look at the connection between the music and the violence. Now learning more about the arrest of a man in the fatal shooting of a 23-year-old rapper earlier this year. And this arrest is starting to expose a tangled web of gang-related murders here in Jacksonville over the past two years. In fact, except for that one guy who wrongly labeled Dominique Barner as the confidential informant, the news actually went on to do a summary of the case so case that was so good, they might as well have opened up a Jacksonville branch of Trap Law, Inc. January 16th, 2019, rapper Willie Addison is killed. Five others wounded in Spring Park. The victims had just left a rap music event at Paradise Gentlemen's Club on Bay Meadows Road. Then, around two weeks later, Damon Rothermel is shot and killed riding his bicycle on Emerson Street, hit by a stray bullet from a shootout between cars. Mm. Fast forward a year to this past January, 23-year-old Charles McCormick is shot and killed in Arlington. On Robinson's Instagram, there was a story posted of a child singing a song entitled KSO Homicide by rapper Young Ean Ace, a local rapper who has made headlines before. The video Wait, was posted. Young Ace has a song called Queso Homicide. After the murder. Good night, Matt. Nah, I'm finishing this. We got a mad time, y'all. Of Charles McCormick. Also, another story which depicted Hakeem Robinson at a nail salon receiving a pedicure with the caption, Kill a N word, then go get my toes done. Hakeem Robinson is charged in the McCormick killing. Brought up a story involving him last year where there was an album released uh, that by him and the screen grab on the image of the album showed different homicide victims in the area. Now clearly Queso wasn't the only shooter in ATK, because just over a month after his arrest came possibly the most devastating loss to the KTA side in this entire beat. On November the 19th and 20th, there are back-to-back -back shootings at the Hilltop Village apartments. That's where Julio's from, and that's where Bibi was killed. Now some of the details about the incidents that went down over these couple of days are a little bit unclear, but what we do know is that over the course of these nights of violence, two of Julio's close friends would lose their lives, Spaz two times and Rod K, with numerous people going on to drop lyrics that seem to suggest that Rod K was actually attempting to avenge Spaz when he was gunned down. However, for the record, this version of events has been disputed in an unverified Reddit comment purporting to be from Rod K's brother, suggesting that he was just out buying blunts when he got shot. In response- Yeah, go back. Rod K was actually my brother, y'all gotta stop that. He was killed on Duns getting blunts. Shit, y'all sound dumb as fuck. He died that night before the dude that got killed on Duns was the next day. Not related to Rod whatsoever. It's a Reddit post, though. Comment I'm reporting to be from Rod K's brother, suggesting that he was just out buying blunts. Why would a why would a nigga claim that he that Rod K was his brother on Reddit? Nah. When he got shot. In response Facebook, to this, Young and Ace posted a screenshot from Fulio's upcoming music video with a caption saying, "This video's got two dead people in it, and it's only been four days." With Ace going on to diss Fulio's losses even further in a post on social media. Since the mom sent her ass back the same way, back in the box, come out. Julio downplayed the loss of his friends in an IG post, saying, It ain't getting to me, because nothing can get to me, because that's what the streets owe us. The world gonna keep going. I'm really disappointed, but I'ma keep focused. But the ATK guys weren't letting up and continued mocking Julio, with Whopper disrespecting him heavily on the story. The ops got the audacity to say that they up. Yeah, y'all ass up. Up in the motherfucking sky, that's the only place you ass up at too. And Ace himself going live to do what seemed to be a feature length self snitching session. <laughs> self snitching. Congratulations, bitch. God clap, bite. To everyone who says something. <laughs> For everything that says something, you know, I do this to their ass. You ain't dead, you said four. Two of them just died. What you, what you, like, what you want? How you want? <laughs> what? You need it? I bring that shit to these niggas, bro. I've been so distracted by these bodies, I don't even know the score no more, bro. This shit crazy, bro. 
Hold on. Fuck them niggas up in the apartments. I won't say their name, but I wiped hey. out that boy. There's not, there's not no play play shit. These niggas really dead and they're not coming back, bro. I ain't gonna I fuck these niggas from them apartments. <laughs> <laughs> I won't say that nigga's name, but I white chalk them. <laughs> I need to get up live because I might fuck around and say some shit that I ain't supposed to say. In response to this devastating <laughs> loss and subsequent this disrespect nigga, nigga, ops, as we end 2020 and go into 2021, Fulio ups the levels on Where the disrespect and drops numerous songs addressing the other side. In December 2020, Fulio drops Double That, a song about him having a supposed $50,000 bounty on his head, a threat which Fulio clearly ain't tripping about. That man is braver than I will ever be. In fact, this is actually the music video that the ATK guys were clowning for having dead people in. Anywho, Fulio clearly wasn't content with just this drop, going on on January the 19th, 2021, to drop his Back in Blood remix. Posing on a bed with the name Leaky spelled out in money, a reference to the recently slain op, with Fulio going on to give his listeners pretty much a PhD in such snitching. Right up to the point where people in the comments were basically saying that the cops are going to be bumping this one heavy in the squad car because of all the details. <laughs> Fulio says in the song We Shot Up Your Brother, which to be honest at this point could go for either Ace or Queso. And Fulio also suggested that the ATK side had nothing to do with his fallen friend Dirk's death and that they're false claiming. Two days later, in response to this track, Spinner Benz dropped a beatbox remix of his own, not providing any new information, but definitely dropping back-to-back -back disses against Fulio. However, unfortunately, following the double murder of Rod K and Spaz, the KTA side would come through with a tit-for-tat response that would leave the ATK team double grieving once again. <laughs> Oh my goodness, bro. On Sunday, February the 21st, 2021, close friends of Spinner Benz and Whopper with a Chopper, Michi and B5, who are also senior figures in Youngin Ace's A-Team management, are in Orlando, two hours south of Jacksonville. According to police, at some point they interacted with individuals in another car. Shortly after that, they were driving down Colonial Drive at around 2.15 a.m. when another vehicle pulled up alongside them, opening fire. Orlando police responded to reports of a crash at 2200 block of East Colonial hey, Drive in front of the Wendy's restaurant. And when officers arrived at the scene, they found Michi and B5 in the vehicle, pronouncing them both dead at the scene. New at 10, we're asking questions Orlando? about the death of Bro, two local so men annoying. who that's were killed. That's a public ass road. Like, that's one of like, the biggest streets like near UCF. That's like a public, that's like a, like, that's a crazy hit. In Orlando, it happened just after two on Colonial Drive. This is new video from the scene. Yeah, Orlando police Drive. say the men happened. were driving when another car pulled up next to them and began shooting at them. And these are new pictures of the victims. On the left is 31-year-old Brandon Bevel. On the right, 25-year-old Darian Solf. According to police, the men were in Orlando for a night out. There's no word on a possible suspect. Spinner Benz reacted to this with a post paying tribute to his fallen friends and vowing revenge, saying that he lost his big bro, his CEO, and his big homie all in one go, but that they won't be the only ones leaving this earth. Meanwhile, Fulio was posting on his story that the Ops are crying today, as well as adding the deceased Michi, saying the A-Team CEO is gone. Fulio later went on an IG live session dissing Michi, suggesting that Michi had helped Ace get his homeboys into bad record deals like Suge Knight would have done. Michi with this CEO, going on nigga page right now, that's it. Still say, 18 CEO, management, spin the and yo. The CEO just died, man. Real deal. Dead. The boss man gone. Dude, that's why they need Ace right now. Ace signed, they got to a $5,000 contract. You locked in for life, bitch ass nigga. I respect Ace for that. You really did a show at night, you know, niggas. Spinner Benz replied to the disrespect, saying that the Ops have more dead homies than he does. And exactly a week after the hit on the 28th of February, Spinner Benz drops his new song, Drill Time. A video starting off with a pretty unique trigger warning, but not the usual trigger warning that you'd find on an unemployed graduate's tweet. This warning said that this video might trigger nightmares in the Ops. And on this oh, track, Spinner Benz did some crazy oh, self protection including saying that he knew Rod K was dead before the police did, as well as saying he wants Fulio dead. Oh my God, that's some federal shit. Might trigger nightmares in that nigga said he knew his <laughs> And on this track, Spinner Benz did some crazy self snitching, including saying that he knew Rod K was dead before the police did. Was that Rod K? Like, died in the hospital? I thought he, Rod K said, like, Rod K almost made it. Mm. So so as well as saying he wants. Fulio dead calling him by his government name, but of course the most iconic anthem of self-snitching in hip-hop history would be released the following month. And soon the entire world would know and be singing along to every single dead op that the ATK crew took pride in smoking. <laughs>
It's almost poetic that only a week before the song Who I Smoke released, the track that's famously disrespecting Bibi, that Queso is formally charged with the murder of Bibi. Hakeem Robinson sits in Duval County Jail with two separate murder charges. His latest arrest is in connection to the 2019 murder of 16-year-old Adrian Gaynor. Robinson has been in jail out. since September in connection to the 2020 murder of Charles McCormick Jr. His father, Abdul Robinson, is also in jail, charged with accessory after the fact in that same murder. A witness told police Hakeem Robinson shot Gaynor at a close range. Detectives say Robinson bragged about Gaynor's murder. Gaynor's nickname was Bibby. His mother says Robinson named an album after her son called Bibby Out. His picture is on the album cover. Hakeem Robinson has already been here in Duval County Jail, serving time for a different murder in 2020. He was served an arrest warrant last week in connection to Adrian Gaynor's murder. And as long as Robinson is in jail, Gaynor's mother feels the community is safe. Meanwhile, the cops are still looking for Queso's brother, Abdul Robinson Jr., who has been wanted by cops since February in connection with Lil Buck's murder. Funnily enough, this whole family run fiasco actually Wait. made the cops look much closer so he's on to a run? everyone involved in these mm -hmm. shootings, especially Queso's dad. With the cops having already pointed the finger at Abdul just Robinson has a Sr., suggesting yeah. that he is a senior figure in the ATK crime organization. In a news conference last year, JSO says the Robinsons are a part of a violent drug trafficking organization called ATK, also known as ACES Top Killers. Police say the group consists of nine people. Abdul Robinson is a leader. Nine people, you know, potentially responsible for 15 murders that we know of and, and who knows what else. As more evidence slash self-snitching piled up, the cops continued expanding their investigation, further so targeting now. ATK as a full-blown crime organization, going so far as to name Queso's dad as a 30-year Jacksonville crime family boss. Yeah, he's on a list of group of individuals who police say are in the ATK gang, Ace's top killers. Here he is right here. There is the picture. JSO says Abdul Robinson ran a crime family centered around drugs for decades. There's many names for ATK. Ace's top killers is one, but it's led by a, a, a man named Abdul Robinson, uh, who's been a, a central crime figure in Jacksonville for probably the last 30 years plus. He added the pair kind of along with several others could be connected to numerous unsolved murders in the city. In fact, ever since this info has come to light, throwback footage of Queso's dad running in the streets of Jacksonville has even emerged and begun circulating on YouTube. Anywho, with Queso and his family sat in jail royally fucked, the feud between ATK and KTA would continue. In the streets, on songs, and weirdly, on Clubhouse. Because only two days before Who I Smoke released, on the 26th of March 2021, Ace and Fool end up talking to each other directly in the same room on Clubhouse. With what them the apparently fuck? being joined by surviving members on both sides of the beef, including Zion Brown's sister who ATK tried to kill twice. And this led to a pretty bizarre conversation that most fans of what Jacksonville the fuck? would have never imagined would happen. At one point, Fulio basically retells the story of a fight that he had with ATK's Lil Popper at a Jacksonville mall back in 2018, with Fulio arguing to Ace that he was fighting with Popper much longer than the video shows. I watch you agree, but this is... But I know you didn't. You probably had a pussy <laughs> YouTube video. That shit went shit. <laughs> the fuck? And then we were really fight on, bro. We were really fighting longer than that. That nigga know that. Like, I fought that man, man. We were fighting for at least 30 seconds to a minute. That's a long. I don't even hear screaming or yelling, chat. These niggas is talking like they friends. They in the, the Discord. Hey, I've been yeah. laughing at shit. Yeah, in Discord and shit. They really chilling. What the fuck? Long ass time, people don't know. Also in the call was apparently Lil Nine's brother, 23K, who was going off on Ace any opportunity that he had. Hey, Bit Nine, you think I don't know how to fight, Bit Nine? You nah. don't know how to fight, Ace, bro. I would knock your shit out, bro. I would beat the fuck out of you. Huh? Bit Nine. Y'all gonna get y'all ass shot. <laughs> you, hey, you gonna do that, though, Fulio? Do what? Uh, shot. Damn, y'all set up, man. You said I did what? TK. What? How? Oh man, that's listen, shit. but that's my brother for real, man. Hey, hey. Man, hey. Yo, this shit is beyond me, chat. I'm lost. I think his name is 23K. Yo, Dab. Huh? Do you, are, you, are you watching the same shit I'm watching? Yeah, bro. Hey, bit not. <laughs> bro, what? Yeah, Green man. ass nigga? <laughs> Don't yell at me. Yeah, hey, I know what type of nigga y'all live too. I swear to God, boy. I'm like, <laughs> boy, you niggas funny. Bit nine, hold on. Bit nine. 
stop yelling at me, bro. Real shit, bro. Nah, you gonna get sent. No, up are we thirsty, huh, Fulio? You better stop yelling at me, boy. You gonna get sent up there. No, you better stop yelling at me. I'm gonna be for your mom, boy. Send a nigga to meet that fucking man. What man? You you wanna find out? Yeah. That's not the same thing. I fuck with you, bitch. No, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Yes, it is, bro. Even though you be talking shit, I'm on your ass. I fuck with you. You know, once again, for a split second, I was thinking, yeah, hey, maybe. maybe these guys will settle their beef on Clubhouse, have a nice little chit chat, yeah. and become friends. But of course not. Two days later, on the 28th of March, 2021, Young and Ace, Spinner Benz, Wapple with the Chopper, and Fast Money Goon will drop their game-changing song, Who I Smoke. A track brutally dissing a whole bunch of ops, including Bibi, Tiki, Lil Nine, Lil Petey, Trey D, and Rod K, with the song itself going insanely viral due to the Vanessa Carlton A Thousand Miles sample devilishly remixed to make their lyrics <laughs> about smoking dead ops irresistibly catchy. Before remixed. you knew it, Who I Smoke had racked up millions of views, and the YouTube culture vulture community was circling with countless reactions to the viral hit circulating I, that going I don't know why your song be sounding so fire when you dissing the niggas you killed like i don't know what it is he said he smoked trey d or something like that i'm like like i was with the avril lavigne uh, saying i was hitting the carlton then as soon as his, i'm sorry who this nigga right here i don't know this nigga but this nigga look like this nigga look like he actually did the murder i ain't gonna lie to you Boy, the white girl and me just came out. That's why like every black federal. nigga be cleaning their house up listening to this shit. Oh I be in the God. kitchen with some socks on, doing the moonwalk, all kind of shit. You know this shit official if he do the famous point. If, it, <laughs> if I could find spear fingers, bring it on. Hey, hey, don't act like I'm the only nigga in here that watched Bring It On before, bro. Fuck up out of here. All y'all niggas have seen Bring It On. Now, it's bad enough grieving your deceased loved ones without the entire internet singing that they're smoking them. And naturally, Who I Smoke was very upsetting for Fulio to hear. In response to that song, Fulio immediately took to IG, showing fans that he had quickly pulled up to the 80k hood of Melvin Park, defacing the sign, writing things like Fuck 23, Fuck Ace, and R.I.P. Rod K on it, as well as claiming that Ace's old hood belongs to him now. The big VL shit, nigga, this I hood right now. I I hood right now, nigga. We pull up to the art shit, this eye shit now, nigga. Nigga, drop this, nigga. Pop y'all bitch ass out, nigga. Man, we pop that, another nigga oh, shit no, all in the park, nigga. This eye shit, nigga. No bout, we all through this bitch. Smoking big key, smoking big 23, smoking me on Melvin, all that shit, nigga, nigga, tripping, man. While he was there, Fulio even gave out dollar bills to those kids on a 6 9 ting. Real, we at Melvin, man. That Lord, all the bro, I appreciate that, you hear me? dollars for you. Couple one, huh? I love it. Uh, Andre. Uh. Just diamonds? Yeah, these diamonds. Huh, bro? Huh? Y'all want a dollar, one dollar? Huh? But Fulio was really in Melvin Park to record a music video for his beatbox remix along with Kojak. Spending enough time on the op block to record an entire music video with enough time to spare at the end to kick back and chill on the swing set before briefly showing off the face of the cameraman who enabled all of this disrespect, surely marking him for death. The swing in a minute, so we came to the op block and did it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> fucked up. You fucked up. Yo, fucked that guy. Up. Hey, we ain't do that shit in a minute. We came to the off block and did it. Nigga, we out there, bitch, Liddy in the city. Fulio and the? Kojak dropped their beatbox remix song a few days later. GG. And the comments for that video were pretty hilarious. Some were saying that this video is the perfect evidence for the cops. Others imagined parents coming back to find their kids and witnessing these nutters playing in the park. While others pointed out that Fulio references the names of so many dead ops in this song that it sounds like he's taken a class from attendance. And I tell you what, he really did name a lot of people. I won't waste my time listing all of them, but they basically did the everyone we chat. mentioned has been killed from the ATK side, as well as a few other names that I didn't even recognize. And Fulio would later say in a live that he had only mentioned around 15% of the names that he could have mentioned. If we if we doing a whole hundred percent, that was like 15% of dead niggas names I said. Only 15. But that wasn't enough get back for Fulio while the whole world was still out there singing that they were smoking on Bibi. So Fulio would go on to make his own remix of Who I Smoke, dissing the usual dead ops and saying that he was in their hood the same night, referring to going to film that beatbox video in Melvin Park. <laughs> But that wouldn't be enough either, oh no. Soon, Fulio took to live once again to diss Ace, recounting details from the scene of that original quadruple shooting. Four niggas hit up, three down. Like, that's a movie. That ain't no movie shit, y'all. Like, that's a movie shit, bro. This man head laying in Ace lap. And Ace talking all that shit. Tomorrow, nobody never play with him. Boy, your blood brother died, boy. Stop, stop playing like your boy. 
Yo blood brother died, boy. Con Con dead, boy. I always remember, boy, your mama's son died, boy. Your mama's son died, boy. Stop playing, boy. Your best friend here was laying in your lap crying for help. Fortening. Fulio then went on to list all of the dead people he is smoking on once again. But Fuck forget off. the classroom roll call because this time Man, Fulio fuck. called out more names than the goddamn credits of Saving Private Ryan. Michi, Leaky, Shook, Agafu, Corbin, Spaz, motherfucking Prosper, Tay, Desi, J5, Big David, 23, oh Four Times, Two Times, Rollo, motherfucking Eldritch, motherfucking Ooh. Ooh, Lymphor. Oh, fucking A, man. Bando. Bro, that's a whole classroom. Bro, like, you dead new, like, every single one of them. Bro, that's a whole classroom. I don't know that many friends in my own. Sometimes, I swear to God, no funny shit. I be forgetting some of them niggas dead. Corn. And I ain't talking about corn, corn. I'm talking about the other corn. Corn. Then corn, corn. I ain't so many dead ass nigga. Keys. You know what I'm saying? Keys. No niggas smoking keys. Dick Nietzsche. Five, J5, I'm smoking J5 and the other nigga five who got smacked with Mucci. I'm smoking two fives. After Fulio posted that, the detectives probably got to go home early. But the disrespect <laughs> was far from done. Because in April, clips begun to circulate seemingly depicting Fulio at a grave site, which some originally thought belonged to Ace's fallen brothers. But in his defense, Fulio later revealed that this was just a random cemetery. It's said I went too far because I went to a graveyard, right? I want to say some shit, but no, nah, I wasn't at nobody graveyard. I ain't, I wasn't at nobody, none of my ops graveyard graves, so I ain't, none of that shit, man. I want to know who came up with that shit in their head and said Fulio on his shit. I ain't do that shit. However, even if it wasn't the real grave site, Fulio was not holding back on the disrespect. Later that day, posting jaw-dropping clips of him driving around with pictures of the three people who died in that quadruple shooting, showing whole new levels of disrespect. I don't know about when them niggas was in the car with Ace and all that shit, how that shit went down, but listen, call with me, they gonna be safe, nigga. Save the first nigga, keep your seat back right on, buckle up, nigga, fuck. Y'all ain't lacking in this car, you ain't gonna go down like that in this car, man. That's mad. Scoot over, Quan. Quan, what are you doing? The fuck, 23 hold man? Come on, man. We gonna, y'all being some badass kids, man. Come on, man. <laughs> now, this turns out this was all for the song Bro. and music video well, that's called mad When I See You, the direct response to Who I Smoke. Released on the 23rd of April, 2021, yeah, like, When I See You too. is so disrespectful that unlike Who I Smoke, both songs are fire. The song's producer yeah, and video's song director, yeah, I assume, on. marking them both for certain death. When I See You has absolutely no credits. This thing is so disrespectful that understandably nobody wants to be affiliated with it as producer, director, runner, there's one guy holding up the picture of the three murdered friends, and even they he's got the good face. sense to keep his face hidden. Hell, whatever print shop made that A2 poster for Fulio probably got spun the next day too. In the track, Fulio <laughs> disses numerous dead ops, but with a particularly harsh focus that on Ace's went out of blood business the next day. and 23 who were killed in that car shooting with Ace. With Fulio ending the song with a fitting response to everybody out there who was still singing When I See You's Loki Better. Baby, with I ain't gonna lie, I think When I See You's Loki Better too. What do you think? Uh -uh. I think I like it's because it's one. so brand new, though. Yeah, I like the other one. Yeah, because, and I miss you. Nah, that was so disrespectful. That shit. Bro, yeah, you bro. wanna know why it was so disrespectful? Because of the ad libs. And I miss you when I see you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was just so. Oh nah, I, I was dead singing that shit for a whole week. Have the video muted. I realized that. When I See You blew up with the same energy of Who I Smoke, getting around 2 million views in two days and continuing to rack up millions of views as we speak. In fact, the video was doing so well, Fulio even went on live to flex his YouTube analytics, showing that this song was his biggest 48 hour debut on the platform. This notification part right here say nice, more regular views are engaging with this video, helping it increase its reach. And they sent me another notification, they sent me this. Shit, that video did so well, I'm surprised YouTube didn't send Fulio that coveted message. I have as many views. Wow, the ops are clicking on this video and watching it longer than usual. You should reflect <laughs> on which op packs have the best engagement when smoked so that you can more effectively it. diss the dead per clan. <laughs> After all of the disrespect for the dead on both sides of this beef, especially on the song Who I Smoke, it's unsurprising that When I See You got a strong response. And Fulio actually went live after When I See You dropped to defend himself against a growing backlash that suggested that his response to Who I Smoke had gone a little too far. Well, now I do what I do. Now I go too far. Now I'm going too far. Huh? Nigga was just shaking the ass and 
cool, they smoke. That nigga need to that, 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 that and that. Well, not a brother name now. Not go, niggas, everybody mad. Everybody got brown faces. Oh, he going too far. He went too far. He went too far. He got a post to print it up, man. So go for it. What? Y'all niggas some hoes, man. Rest up, man. Hey, listen. Rest up, Rod K, man. Rest up, Bibby, man. Rest up, Trady. What's the nigga was just this? Now nah, my dog, not nah, my turn. Not even fuck niggas, man. Oh, uh, he riding away. He the one. Fuck, and then he can't get them niggas by any fuck niggas went to the funeral lab. Puss ass, nigga. He was dishing on me. E. Now I'm smoking 23. <laughs> Today, police said DeAndre Thomas was the shooter. They charged him with murder. Two guilty verdicts were read, one for Henry Hayes and one for Kwame Richardson, who were tried separately. Finally, her family has the answers they've been looking for. Police arresting 21-year-old Roland Ball Jr. for murder. 21-year-old Hakeem Robinson and his father, 49-year-old Abdul Robinson, are both in the Duval County Jail. Damn in the shame. past two weeks, six people have been arrested linked to at least one of the killings. I can't lie. Who I Smoke is a catchy ass song. So is When I See You. And look, if you've watched one of my videos on gang beefs before, you know I have a habit of ending these things by saying, oh, I just hope these guys can focus on music, stop beefing, and leave the violence in the streets. But realistically, when you look at this story, so much has gone down on both sides. Brothers killed, song, mothers yeah. and fathers shot in their own homes, mm -hmm. children as young as two years old being Passing shot and away. killed in the crossfire. Mm -hmm. It would be naive to think that even a second that there is gonna be some kind of positive outcome or resolution to this feud. There's nothing First I could not. ever say to Ace or Fulio or anyone else involved that would make them see things differently. And as moving as his music is, Young and Ace could never make a song that will make me truly understand the pain of losing your three brothers in front mm -hmm. of your very eyes. That's and I know some people will watch this video and accuse me of leeching off of a bad situation and a tragedy by making content out of it. But the reality is, there's very little any of our words can do to calm the tensions of these two groups of warring men. Too much mm -hmm. blood has been shed on both sides to think that there would ever be any kind of amicable resolution. The next best thing I think that we can do is just take a step back and take a mature look at this situation to try and understand why everyone involved in this story was driven to act so viciously so that mm -hmm. the next generation of young men coming up in a place like Jacksonville or any city that's dangerous that W video? This is a W video. This is like a movie. No, that was a dead movie, bro. That was an hour and, 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 and 50 minutes. Really don't have the guidance in their life to tell them that nah, recording just a song about the who I smoke definitely got it. Saying that you're smoking a dead person or that you're going to smoke somebody could lead to your life being cut short early. Because despite being a catchy viral hit, the song Who I Smoke is really just about tragedy after tragedy. And all the peoples whose names that they're singing they smoked are real people watch what real you're families singing. who miss them. This beef is particularly heartless. In fact, something I was taken aback by whilst I was researching this story was just how many of the people involved make reference to video games. I've heard numerous people joking in this beef that the ops lost a Fortnite battle, that they're getting kills like it's Warzone, or that somebody got wasted like it's GTA. That might sound like a funny diss in the moment, but some of these kids are really treating I'm their from lives from Jackson, like I'm from Jacksonville, I can honestly tell you all these blocks, I'm not trying to be funny, I say that when they get killed, they don't respawn. When they get arrested, they don't be directly accurate. $500 lighter, and with none of the weapons they came in with. The mothers yeah, and this fathers, dude's definitely getting the men this information who died in this from deadly gang war are still green every day. Shit like Whether that. it's Peso putting a picture of him smoking the dead ops on his album cover, <laughs> and or the ATK in the boys dressing up in golf clothes and singing the names of who they smoke over a funny beat. This shit has got to stop. So I hope you found this video and this story interesting, but more importantly, I hope it's given you a better understanding of the reality behind some of the words in these songs. And in future, maybe think twice before you say you're smoking on Bibby or Tuca or Duck and spare a thought for the brothers, sisters, the mothers, or even the children of the people you're saying that you're smoking in these songs. Because Boy. I know for a fact, you won't want somebody saying that they're smoking you or one of your loved ones. This Thanks so fun. much for listening. I really appreciate your time. And until next time, peace out. I'll be all of them. W video, bro. This yo, this trap lord nigga. I don't know where he came from, but this thing is a good nah, talker. He, he's been he's been popping up on my feed all the time.